Okay, we're right back with Billy. He's underway. He's got a chainsaw revved and apologies for that short delay. The servers have betrayed us once again. Um, not really anything we can do about that. Uh, but we have started off as soon as possible. And that's just me, kid. It is we, Jason. How much damage can he do? How much damage can he do? Hopefully a lot right here. This is the time to do it. Finds the first survivor onto Jaw. Can you curve around this right here? Oh, that's a little bit. Yeah, I was about to say, as soon as you left that pallet, that could have potentially have been danger right there. Maybe tried to get the fire barrel tech. No one home for it though. Jason says, nah, I'm not falling for your shenanigans. Gets the first hook and time to rotate over. Now he's gonna wrap this up, so you gotta play the game a little bit more normally here, so. Here we go, gonna find another survivor here. Haunt already getting caught. Kind of in no man's land, has to pre-drop this pallet, of course. Uh, we're gonna have to rotate over. But, you know, this is not the best situation to be in, just because the, you know, the jaw is right next to where you're getting chased. So, you know, your option is to kind of push away as far away as you can, so you can get that save onto jaw. But what are the other two survivors doing? On gents, just chasing them off, and finally you do get that save, and you just gotta go back, right? Yeah, I think you have to. And we Jason's actually had quite a rough start to this, bonking a lot of different objects around the map. Maybe he's not quite used to this new bully buff yet. We'll have to wait and see as the cooldown effect is the nerf was long enough. He couldn't make that pallet in time. Jar just about escapes. Now he's going to break it, try and zone Jar down into a bad spot. Going back towards the barrel, which we saw him on recently. The firecracker comes out, doesn't blind Billy, but it doesn't matter because Jar just escapes for now. This escapes for now, but how much longer can he last? Have you read this pallet? No, gonna go around. Oh my god, can you close up right here? You have to push up this, yeah? Yeah, you do get stunned. Shout out to Q. How are we going to play this pallet right here? Do we just go for the break? No, we're gonna try to go for the down right here. And this is the, you know, whenever you do zone out people with overdrive Billy, it feels like it's an unwinnable situation. And what are you swinging at, man? You gotta be careful right there, but still able to maintain this chase. That's a fault right there, and yeah. I mean, look, playing on latency, those mind games, they're not 50-50s. They're more like 80-20s, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really nice play from Jar there. It's a super difficult pilot, and I respect them going to another rock to extend the loop. That's something you see a lot on short... Um, short pallet tile loops this is something you can put into your own gameplay at home ladies and gentlemen going to another rock extending it basically making it a longer loop especially against billy who is now so capable of shutting down the loops with this extra curve um, it's a really really good idea it's a nice play there from jar extending the chase a little bit more and they get two gems done for it and that main gen is not far off no, definitely not far off at all, and this is kind of a pick your poison moment. Are we going to, you know, continue to pressure, you know, this hook save and not make it easy for the survivors? Or are we going to try to go for something? No, we're going to opt to try to trim the fat on the resources right here. That's exactly what, you know, you should do. This is kind of like a dead time moment because the survivors are not over committing. They're probably going to let like, just you know, they're probably going to let the sacrifice happen. So what you do is, Billy, you maximize your time. Yeah, there's the gem pop up in main right there. Yeah. You maximize your time by just breaking all the pallets and just making sure that, you know, those don't come back to bite you later. So that's pretty smart. And yeah, this is just to confirm the kill right here. We're going to have to say goodbye to Jaw for now. We'll see them later in game number two. But here comes Jason pressuring another killer, knowing Wispy potentially rotated over here. But no, nobody home for it. We're going to get a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of a good spread right here. If we can get this middle gen done. It's harder to say the least, but if we get that middle gun done, then that basically makes us screen way easier. Even with high mobility right here, gonna get the vault or uh, the pallet drop. I mean, this dude is. Can he find something right here? No. Jason just gonna get the curve over the car, but not before. Then number four pops. Yeah, it does, and he costs a lot of time. I wasn't actually a big fan of his play to stay right by the hook. That's a lot of old Billy, what we used to see. But actually, um,. Uh, we saw a great match between Ari and Dale and um, another team start with A. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, Ter team Eternium. Um, what Bubba did there really nicely in that game is he would go back and forth between the hook with his chainsaw, with his super high mobility, and basically guard the hook from a distance, still applying pressure. We Jason has ruin. That's something he could have been doing, but instead he's just got the 1K for four generators. It's not amazing for We Jason, especially as we know how good Billy can be. Here we go then into another chase against Ace, who takes a body block for Nancy, who's going to be scarfing away back to main building. Absolutely gonna make it back right there. Oh, gotta be careful, gets the vault, but now the million dollar question right here. 
Where's Wispy? What Genza has he been working on? And that's Rune right there. Doing a little bit of magic. Going to slow that down a little bit. Forcing these survivors to stay on the gens, right? But are we going to make it to the winnable? I don't think so. And that's going to be the down onto Wispy. But you are over a window. Obviously, you know, you have to kind of just rotate and continue to defend these gens. Can you snipe them out? No. Good awareness right there. I believe it was on. So, great awareness. No, no. It's actually mischievous. It might be both. No, it's mischievous for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely on Nazi here. Uh, she's going to go down as well. And this is really dangerous. We could actually turn into a slug situation. Billy able to traverse the map quickly. We'll be able to guard these ones. Horn is going to be really careful about how he does it. Gets the pick up right under Billy's nose. Wispy goes down, but now Haunt is in chase. And he's got to stall a long time and get a survivor up safely. A trade won't be enough. Eventually, everyone's going to hit the deck. Oh, he's just going around main building here. He's got a pretty good loop set up. But we, Jason, is going to gain blood loss after a little bit and he goes right he goes right in main building and i don't know how many good pallets there are around here blood loss coming in um we don't have any unbreakables because billy's a tier three killer right but unbreakable is a bad perk and this is this is looking so bad oh no we're going to get it right here the down and like you said you know very defensive play right here from uh from jason knowing that you know if you can get this first kill confirmed you know that 3v1 situation all of a sudden becomes more difficult for survivors even if there's only one gen left and unfortunately not being able to you know you know go to a, a spot where all the gens have been completed and maybe reset and that kind of came back to bite them potentially a little bit obviously you know billy can insta down so that might have been the thought process as to why they were willing to stay injured but they got hit by a ton of them ones unfortunately so you know it didn't really pan out the way that you know maybe they thought it would pan out and that's going to be a 4k one man yeah, I, I think it's a really big blunder from Team X9 because they had a really good start. Okay, they lost one survivor, um, but they got four gens done. A little bit of a three gen area, but like you're saying, they were all injured. They had time to reset there. Um, but basically, fundamentally, they all just got caught out. They all just gave up, uh, you know, gave themselves away so easily. Wee Jason is going to be dropping his hands at that. I mean, that just got put on a platter for him. And he's gonna get the four with one generated to go. It'll be sinners up. Um, so it'll be the sinner survivors up next. If they can complete five generators, which is our primary win condition, they're gonna be taking the first set point of this loser semi-final. Remember, it's the best of five, so it's first to three set points. Can they do it, SSB kid? You know, uh, if anything, so you know, my time in competitive has been very limited. But the one set I did see, you know, Wispy play Billy was against the Elysium in the Hens tournament. And Elysium just like steamrolled and Wispy was just not able to match that result. This is a much more doable result potentially. So I'm not really sure. I, it could definitely happen. You know, it, it, this is a 4K at one. So all you have to do is either just tie the condition or, uh, you know, get a 4K two. And then, you know, you're in a much better spot, but I'm not really too sure. We're going to have to see it right after this break don't go anywhere we'll be right back with the second half of billy game one back we hope you've enjoyed the short break while we get the second half set up and now the choice is the conditions are very clear whiskey has to at least 4k1 in order to tie this 4k2 in order to take the win right here after a great start for next line Jason was able to bring it all the way back for Team South America. Now can we see Wispy step up for his team? And can we see potentially the first down already right here? Onto Gustavo. Can we get it? No Ooh. home and home. Just, a, just an inch away. And that's the pallet break, but gets the Pocos through it anyways. I thought he could have actually kept on chainsawing there. Maybe not used to the extra turn rate. It looked like he had enough distance to go all the way around the tile. Um, but kind of cancel the sword a little bit prematurely. We'll have to see that one on the instant replay. Uh, it's not actually something we have. Maybe one day. But for now, it's a it's an injured um, sorry, it's an injured Gustavo running for his life. Disconnects to another toll. Does he have the distance for Jack Panner? This one's gonna be another close one. Yes, he does. Goes down straight in the face of Billy. No, he doesn't. He stands right next to it. Didn't want to jump. Jack Palette of five gens. Maybe that's okay in a public match, but I'm not sure about that in the losers' semi-finals of the winter circuit. 
Yeah, you cannot, you have to have as many resources as possible, especially against Billy, who can eat through pallets like they haven't ate in days. But, you know, that's going to be, you know, the first hook, and that's going to be a basement hook, and that's going to be the shack pallet down so early. And now this is where, you know, this is a make or break moment, right? This is where you have to rotate to all the gems and see what's going on. And flick pop onto one that might be at 90 to get a ton of value off of it. Or do you go back or do you continue to trim the fat? We saw Jason do this a little bit as well. Kind of in that situation where there's not a lot going on. You don't want to overcommit because if you overcommit, then that's a that's a rotate over to get the rescue. And then you're left with nothing. So Wispy having to play this a little bit more defensively. Definitely trying to confirm stage two and then, uh, and then potentially see what the move is afterwards. You know, definitely going to do a last minute check because you never know who's stealthing out but that's going to be the first gem pop right there on the sinners and yeah i feel like wispy is so confident that someone's here but yeah this this is the little difficult thing about basement like obviously it's super strong because it's really difficult to get people in and out of here but it can sometimes be hard for the killer to patrol when it's right inside shack survivors can often sneak in it's not out in the open so that's why wispy's being extra cautious here but i think he knows because he's got us down so early in the game he knows there's not a lot of gen pressure on at the moment he can afford to get this kill um and still possibly reach the win con uh, because billy is so strong but we'll have to see how that one develops remember um if three more generators pop if they get five more generators wispy loses this one for x9 and sinners go one nil in the setup and i quickly want to ask you by the way ss speaker how did shack pallet do get dropped there was there an attempted uh, pallet save on the pickup because no way they dropped it as they got down right uh, it actually was a, it actually was a drop as he went down he like managed oh, wow. wispy somehow somehow wispy managed to get on the other side of it get okay. the down but still but still proctored the drop and then still get stunned by it. I, I you know, <laughs> I saw him break it after he put it in the basement. I was like, uh, hold on a second. How, how, why on earth is Shaq Pallet down? I thought the point was they saved it for it. Uh, but no, it betrayed Gustavo and he dies straight away. Survivor's not coming to help him. They need to get these three gens done now. They've decided not to help him. One generator gets done. Wispy doesn't get there in time to stop it. He can get this chase, but the other two survivors will be powering through generators. Absolutely. I mean, this is kind of, you know, this is the the question right do you split pressure onto two gens or do you just double i feel like we saw potentially a double up on a gen and then this person working on a, on a different gen so we might potentially see that as well I'm gonna go for the wow. vault oh my god just barely slipped through the cracks right there sweet child you know applying butter on themselves to get through that chainsaw can we see the pallet drop right here yeah we have to right you have to obviously especially because of what happened earlier at shack that's probably something that's communicated where like oh can you get him off no so close right here but this is again a window this is a really strong tile the bamboozle that wispy brought compared to you know jason not bringing it this is a pop on a gen potentially no you gotta hit the gen though kind of stop the progress right here can you get, confirm the down if you confirm the down that is a pain resonance stack so that's definitely something worth going but unfortunately runs into an appliance not gonna get the down right here wispy still trying to chase can we find something that's a grunt that means so bell sunny but the bamboozle timer's up that's so unlucky great timing right there from sweet child unfortunately not gonna pan oh, out the way that he wants to oh he has to he has to leave that and now try and find the person on this gen but while he's doing that they're gonna get that main gen done it's gonna be so close and he should probably be down to one generator he's gambling now that they've gone down into the basement i mean this is a huge risk from wispy just opening lockers at random assuming they're gonna be there and he could be thrown the game with this play a crazy decision for wispy goes down into the basement to desperately try and find the survivor who could be miles across the uh, the map by now having seen the killer go down into basement i mean he's got absolutely no pressure across the map right now yeah no pressure at all you know the only thing he really has going for him is that the fact that there's this you know this regen is not bad at all but still you know obviously you know with with shack having a gen it's really easy to stealth out the killer when you are working on that shack gen because there's so many places you can go and wispy simply does not have enough time to get through all of them so now this is where you have to overcommit a little bit unfortunately you were not able to get the you know the down that you wanted or you know the second down that you wanted so now it's going to be a little bit of an overextension and you have to end this chase immediately get that pain resonance stack get that pop stack so you can pressure one of the gens and you can pressure shack gen as well we're gonna get the m1 right here right yeah it has to be that's gonna be the vault over and you know he has to rotate over to check on this gen 
I mean, this is really, really tricky. You've got to provo prevent any of these gens from popping. They're all so, so close. We're starting this third gen as now. Uh, oh, sorry, this is, the, this is the other gen. Okay, that one maybe not as far progressed, but he's always got Shaq gen to go to, and Wee Jace is in such a good spot to spot him. The, uh, the thing going for Billy, though, is this new chainsaw is pretty good around Shaq. I mean, he can go through the doorway and basically hit you um, just on the other side of the pallet side. So he's got great mobility. Unfortunately for him, Wee Jason has Spring Burst, and he's absolutely out of it. He can sort out this chase with two people on the other gen. This could be close. Gets the stun as well onto the wrong side. Billy has to go back towards that other gen. Yeah, you have to, absolutely. Yeah. Especially when that third gen started getting pressured right here. This is where you have to go. Can you find something here, though? Man, that pressure. The, the fact that these survivors were so, you know, just so coordinated and able to just rotate to the right spots at the right time. And again, you have to get the kick to buy yourself maybe five seconds of time. But now, both gens are so, so far progressed. Honestly, I think the inevitable is coming. It looks like game one might be going to sinners. Yeah, there's been some questionable plays made from Wispy here for sure. This new chainsaw just doesn't seem to be working with Wispy. He can't quite feel it. And with that whiff, I mean, it's going to wrap it up on Wispy. Yeah, I think he knows that just wasn't one of his greatest performances. I mean, Wispy is a fantastic killer. He plays so many different killers for X9. Unfortunately, though, when your roster is that small, sometimes you might not have people know quite up to every single killer he's fantastic on so many we've seen outrageous results from him 4k5s on rpg with wraith in previous tournaments i mean this guy is seriously seriously good but this match just completely fell away from him a lot of whiff chainsaws a lot of bonks and i think wispy is back in the training room here man unfortunate right there yeah i mean that's that that's uh that's definitely um rather unlucky but again the beauty you know if this were best of three i would be worried for wispy but this is best of five you know you have you know it's a very momentum uh momentum based uh situation in the best of five settings so um you know that that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes so you know you just have to collect yourself go next and you'll be good because now you're going to your own pick hypothetically this is a pick that you're not supposed to win so you know you just go next and you got to win on one of their other picks so it's not the end of the world we're potentially going to see that happen game two but we're going to go to a short break and uh we're gonna come oh never mind yeah we're actually <laughs> going to you know before we do that let's uh let's talk a little bit about what's going on uh, game number two. Kerry, I know uh, I know you got a lot of things yeah. to talk about. Well, I just wanted to quickly dissect at the end of that Billy game before we jump into things uh, with Doctor, who, of course, <laughs> we're going to have to see the rebound for um, X9. But yeah, there's a couple of things in that Billy game I just wanted to talk about. So I thought for Wispy, the chainsaw didn't quite seem to gel with him. We saw a lot of inward dodges, which I think is something we will see with future Billy. Because he's got that extra speed from overdrive, engravings is so important. Billy tends to almost over curve at the start and it can take him a while to adjust in. So survivors going for inwards dodges. We saw Sweet Child do it a lot as Kate. Um, it's something that really extended the chases. The inwards dodges were really big. But also the decision making from Wispy, I thought, was a little bit strange. And I wonder if you can touch on this as well. Um, parts where he, 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 he was chasing survivors, couldn't close it, and then just ended up sprinting across the map, went down to check lockers in basement. I don't know if there were voices talking to him inside their head. What was he cooking with, with those plays, SSP? You know, uh, you know, I, I like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt with, a, with their mm -hmm. decision-making because at the end of the day, you know, they're the ones that are playing, you know, a high level comp tournament and not me. But yeah, I'm not really too sure. I feel like uh, I feel like the locker gamble might have been just a little bit too high of a price. Right. And the odds not really, you know, high risk, not as high of a reward. Right. Obviously, I mean, honestly, probably as high of a reward, because if we had potentially a um, if we had someone in the locker, that might have been, you know, that might have been the game. Right. Because that would have been two people in basement and you just confirm four or five stages potentially. So and then, you know, with the second survivor in basement, that would have definitely forced, you know, the survivors to go get the rescue. And then that kind of potentially could be the snowball. Right. But yeah. unfortunately, just not able to pan out. Um, and then afterwards, it felt like, you know, you know, it felt like, you know, like you said, Sweet Child had some of the craziest jukes around those chainsaws. Like I thought for sure once or twice we would have potentially seen that happen. And then as well as the um, there was one there was one chainsaw from I believe it was from Wispy at that rock where, you know, 
potentially could have gotten something right there, but unfortunately not able to pan out for him. But regardless, you know, Wispy's going to end up going to end up switching to the doctor and we're going to, you know, get something cooking right now, potentially if he can bring it back. You know, it's a tough situation to be in when you lose a game like that, but mm. you just have to collect yourself and just go next. And that's like the biggest thing anyone can ask for, because obviously we all want a good showing. Everyone wants to play well, and that might be the best way to do it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think mental reset is so, so important there. And I think you're right as well. Um, you've got to give some credit to Wispy there. I think he realized he was in a really, really bad situation. When he went over to that um, second to last gen and it popped right in his face, he realized he was in a desperate scenario. Maybe that's why he was checking lockers in the basement. But he's got to put that behind him now because he's going to be jumping right onto Doctor, which requires a lot of patience, a lot of fundamentals. He can't be getting impatient at the loops he can't go for that extra swing too early he's got to be really really disciplined in making sure he catches the survivor off guard before he goes for a swing um we don't want to see too much kind of annoyance and aggression out of wispy it looks like we're loading into things straight away remember ladies and gentlemen doctor a tier four killer a lot of meta perks is banned we're going to be on wrecker's yard for it and wispy seems to make things right on their pick it's x9 one down against sinners can they bring it back here we go. Like you said, the big question is, can you bring it back? And with one blast to get some information right here, definitely one way to start the pressure onto these survivors. Going to obviously bring a couple pretty uh, pretty good perks. Uh, force hesitation being, or not force hesitation, sloppy butcher being uh, one of the one of the you know good perks on Doctor, just because those heals can take forever. And obviously, you know, if the doctor's coming right at you, then you know, obviously you have to leave. So. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that Rapid Vitality that we're that, seeing from Wispy? That is indeed, and that's a really interesting pick. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a confidence pick. Um, I'm not entirely sure when they submit these builds. It could have been before the Billy game. It uh, might have been just now. But yeah, a really, really aggressive pick. I mean, normally you tend to see kind of Noed on Doctor or some other kind of typical meta perk we see all throughout the DPD League. But Rapid Brutality is definitely not one we see um, all the time. If those of you folks don't know what it does, you can hover over it with your mouse or I could just tell you uh, when you hit Survivor, you're going to gain a little bit of a speed boost. Here you go. You can see him getting the speed boost now. He'll be able to catch up to the Survivor much quicker and hopefully get two hits uh, consecutively and get a very, very quick down. Let's see if it happens now as he chases Bucky through uh, the four wall, which is kind of disconnected. Gets all the way around. Is Bucky going to vault? No, Wispy patient on the swing. Catches up to him now. Gets the down. Um, gets a little bit of speed and he's just going to use that to plunk Bucky onto a hook. Yeah, absolutely. And no and no uh, interesting saves right there because we did see Bucky with uh, with the cracker, the party starter, whatever, whichever one it is. Right. So we're not going to get any, you know, interesting SEAL Team 6 saves right here. But, you know, we are going to potentially rotate right here into main building side. And now, like you said, corrupt, corrupt is up. Time to play the game a little bit more normally. And that's more information that you're getting right here. But yeah, getting actually a pretty... Uh, you know, getting the hits early, even without Bloodlust, so that's actually uh, really good. Obviously, you know, if survivors are playing safe enough, if they're, you know, playing with quite a bit of distance, then that Rapid Brutality ends up not really uh, working out the way that you want it to. But we are going to see, you know, like we said, the first down already happening. You know, still no gens pop. Obviously, there's a, some progression. I was going to say, there's a lot of progression. Wait, you, you, static, you shocked that gen, and they managed to rotate, or they managed to get off of it far enough to not get hit by it so then wispy doesn't chase and then they come back and finish it that's really good movement from the survivors right there it's something we're going to see a lot from sinners this entire tournament they've been so so good so so clinical um i would expect to see more plays like that two generators pop now bucky does get confirmed to second stage will wispy secure the tongue out i would be surprised to see if he's uh, sorry secure all three stages onto bucky he likes normally to play a bit more open uh, put a bit more pressure across the map instead of one dimensional just um, getting someone out of the game. He likes these slow killers. This is why X9 have picked Do Doctor and Wraith. Wispy knows what he's doing with these guys. I'm expecting to see some kind of aggression from Wispy right now, unless he's just waiting for survivors to make the first move. You know, definitely waiting for survivors to make the first move, but there is a bit of a forge in on, the, in, on this side of the map. You know, there's one in Shack, there's one at the Rock, there's one by the Hook, and there's one on the far side uh, where the Hook is at. So, you know, definitely gonna see a... Yeah, this, this this is exactly how it has to be. You have to have two survivors come in to get to the save. You know, this pickup's gonna happen for sure, but it's just gonna be a trade right here. But Rapid Brutality, can you tunnel out the survivor, right? 
can you get some value out of this? That's going to be the big question right here. If you can confirm that, that's going to be huge. Oh, and that's a really well-timed shock. And uh, Bucky's in a really sticky situation here. Couldn't bowl the window. Couldn't drop Shaq Pala. He needs a body block from Anansi, who gets there just in time. Bogs through the window. A hero play from Wee Jason. Keeps Bucky alive. And we've got another gen going. Now, will Wee Jason sacrifice himself for Bucky? Because I don't think he's making Shaq Pala with the drop. He's going to go down. Doesn't go down on Shaq Pala. He's going to be out of the game. But a nice little time save there from Wee Jason. Yeah. Yeah, great little time save right there. That might be just enough time for Wee Jason also to rotate over and pick up Gustavo, which is actually going to... Yeah, there it is. Exactly. Great stuff right there. Just buying enough time and just hoping that they can make it happen, but that's going to be the blast right here. Yeah, Rapid Brutality is still able to get around really smart stuff. Oh, this mind game. There's... Yeah, I was going to say, that's the mind game of a lifetime. And then actually, guess right right here, going to be able to reach uh, Gustavo right here, potentially going to get the down. Yes, he's going to side with the window. That's going to be the down. <laughs> That was, that was a crazy mind game and it worked completely. Wispy showing the fundamentals. This is what Doctor requires. Killers like this need incredible mind games and absolutely pulls that one off there. Gustavo goes onto the hook. Now he wants to minimize the amount of generators he can do. He'll be feeling confident he can get a lot of stages out of these survivors. He's got to minimize that first win condition and stop them getting their generators done. He's still got two pain resonances to play with. Still has two pain reses to play with, and yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know if you see the layout right here. This is a pretty good three gen, uh, especially with Shaq being down as well. I don't think he's broken it yet, but this is still. Oh, that's gonna Ooh. be yeah. That's gonna be a hit right here potentially, and that's gonna be the four set. No, never mind. There's a pallet right here. Smart stuff right there from Sweet Child. Great awareness, understanding that there hasn't been a whole lot of chases on this side of the map. Just gotta hit the blast, right? Just gotta hit the blast to kind of you know understand where everyone's at. So. Uh, you know, this is uh, pick your poison, right? You, whoever you go for, the other person is just going to come get the save. Yeah, they get that final gen done, but now they're in a really tricky spot because we, Jason, can't really move in with Sweet Child because they're injured. And I think they might have to let Gustavo here go to second stage, get a reset, maybe start a couple other generators because uh, this is really tricky. Yeah, we, Jason, going on to start that Shaq gen, and it might be Sweet Child going in alone. Gustavo hits second stage. Shaq Pallet gets broken. We, Jason, forced off the generator, and not a lot of pressure here from Sinners. This is a really, really tricky situation to navigate, especially when Kate gets found. If she gets injured, Gustavo's health and safety is not looking good. A nice time shot there from Wispy. Doesn't commit through it. Kate eventually drops the pallet. Wispy goes around, respects it, and tries to interrupt the save, but it's happening. Yeah, the save is going to happen right here. If we can get a hit, that could be... No, you're just going to get the tunnel out. Yeah, smart stuff. Caught off the survivor. You do have access to this tile right here. This is where you're going to throw the power, potentially? No, just get a mind game, and then potentially that'll be enough. No, going to have to... Oh, that's that's it. That's it. Oh, oh no, you have this pallet here. Yeah, nice, nice connecting for the God Rocks. Oh, but she drops it. That costs her distance. That costs her the safety. And she goes down. Gustavo hits the deck and is going to be tunneled out. Now, how much pressure can they get on the generators while this is all happening? Yeah, definitely could get some worthwhile pressure right here. You know, you're probably pushing the, uh, the gen by the rock or potentially pushing main gen. So that's going to be where you want to go. Potentially get... The static glass, can can you get it? Yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. I tell you a big trouble the survivors have got right now. Because Doctor is a tier four killer, a lot of common healing perks you have um, are, are banned. They're not allowed in this category. Oh, nuts has been caught out a little bit there. No, she was safe enough. Wispy decides to respect it. But yeah, as I was saying, a lot of the healing perks you, you have and you like to use are banned. So this reset is probably why it's been taking so long to come in. They just don't have those perks they want. Empathetic connection, kind of the only one we've got going on right now and doesn't provide a lot of value for the situation they are in. Sweet Child just gets forced off and Wispy is slowing this one right down. He knows he's got control of the map. He knows where the survivors are. He's just playing this very, very nicely. Yeah, definitely playing nicely to say the very least. And yeah, saw the blood fading away, understands where uh, understands where everyone's going to be at as well. And even guess right right there on, on, the, on, on the shock therapy. So great stuff. And this is going to be where you slowly but surely cut off Wee Jason. Can you get this down immediately? This is probably the worst person to chase as well because this is only one hit that you need. One hit, and then you rotate over and find the other survivor. Oh, not even going to commit for it just because of understanding the gen spread out understanding you know how uh easily they can get that pressure however fun bus okay interesting choice with the pre-drop right there uh, i'm actually very surprised to see that to say the very least. 
Well, I think because it's so far away from the rest of the gens, Kate knows he's not going to spend a great deal of time breaking it, and they'll still be able to run all the way over here, um, even with that pallet broken. So I don't think it's too valuable of a resource. If it was earlier in the game, I would say, yeah, it's a surprising pre-drop. But at this stage of the game, I completely understand it. Sweet Child then gets here, and Wisp is going to follow this one up. He finally decides to pull the trigger, gets the shock on. Kate not wanting to bolt there, and I don't think she's got a pallet round here. Oh, she's going down very, very quickly. Rapid brutality value. He closes the distance, gets the down. I don't think we Jason's going to have enough time to finish that generator. No, and I think the reason why Wispy decided to commit to this is because he knew where Jason was and knew that that gen had just been started, had like 1% progress. So he knew that if his chase could be short enough, he was able to at least get the pain rest to stop it and then have enough time to rotate over. And now this is where, you know, you have to, yeah, you have to blast your power. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and it's found it, and that's going to be Raps. A beautifully played endgame from Wispy. I mean, as we were just saying, a perfectly timed trigger pull of when to commit to these chases. He slowed the game down exactly when he wanted to. He controlled it. It looked a little bit ropes at the start of the game, but he bounced right back, gets a 4k1. That's a really, really tough result uh, for the Sinner's Killer to match. Um, on Doctor. On Doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah on Doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and the X9 survivors are going to have to, well, <laughs> they're going to have to um, perform a little bit better, perhaps, than they did okay. on the first match. Okay, the reason he's swinging for that, just, just letting you know, the reason he's swinging for that is because earlier he tried to get that swing around the corner, whiffed, and then got pallet stunned. So maybe he's just like, maybe he's <laughs> practiced that a lot on his own, and is, is probably like, wait, why didn't that work earlier? You know, like, maybe he's asking himself that, so uh, that'd, be, that'd be really interesting to... Uh, you know one day i'll be like why, why'd you do this probably be like ah i thought i could get it so um that was the first chase too so that would that was like that was potentially everything but yeah like like we said this result on doctor very very good obviously usually we see all, gen, all at least all the gens getting done right potentially we see one or two outs as well so uh so that's gonna be you know um, a, a tough win condition to match to say the very least carrie do you think they can do it Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially just because Sinners have just been so surprising to me this tournament. I know they're a really good team. They've been together for a long time. But to come into DVD League and perform this well straight away off the bat takes a lot of, like, strength, um, real, like, mental resilience. Um, they've just been so, so strong in this tournament. So impressive. And I'm sure they're going to put it around. But, I mean, that's all coming up after a quick break. We'll be back with the second half in no time at all. Here we go, game number two, set number two, whatever you want to call it. This is the second half, and now X9 has to survive against the Sinner's Doctor, and I believe it's Jason again. Uh, you know, the tried and true, great use right there. We're seeing Vistuous right here, able to get into the locker to avoid the immediate uh, static blast, which is something that we see a lot. But it doesn't even matter if he gets spotted out anyway, so that's going to be uh, that's gonna be the chase already on him. Maybe he tries to stealth out a little bit. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, the check spots were not spotted there. <laughs> a little bit bad timing. Bolt straight into the killer and get shocked for it. I mean, something they did well at the start to dodge. Now get shocked for it. Going to be applying Madness Tier 1 onto X9, but they're probably Madness Tier 5 in their head after bolting straight into the killer. Just to go over the win conditions again for any of those new to Dead by Daylight League and competitive Dead by Daylight. If X9 get all five generators done, they will level the scoreline. They will go one set each in this best of five. And another catch out from Wee Jason, X9 survivors giving away quite a few hits here, SSB. Yeah, giving away a lot of hits, a lot of unnecessary hits, it feels like, too. Obviously, like, we had that unfortunate, like, window vault into the killer, which is, you know, a strat that I was not made aware of. But, you know, you know, whatever works, works, right? But still getting, you know, and then getting another hit onto Haunt. Normally, we see these extra hits whenever you're trying to body block for survivors to try to delay that first down. But right here, uh, it's just tough because, you know, the Sloppy Butcher is just going to make it hard to heal up. You have to really commit to get this heal. But, you know, and, and even with Krupp still up, you know, you're at least uh, having uh, the gents being blocked. So uh, that makes it really difficult. You have to get this free drop. I mean, again, don't want to give Jason anything, but eventually these resources are going to, you know, just start thinning and thinning and thinning out even more. And also pay attention to the build. We do see the know it, which is something that, you know, maybe Jason is expecting it to you know potentially go that far which uh oh well actually no I i'm a liar this is the body block for sure 
Um, but you know these builds are are made before uh, before the matches, so you can't switch your builds to play for wing cons. So that might have been like a, a safe pick to use no win, right? Well, well, this is the thing because they lock in the builds before, so you can't adjust them to play for the wing cons. I mean, there's no way we Jason would have wanted no Ed because that's not useful. If X9 hit five generators, he's lost Doesn't anyway. Matter. So no Ed's, if no Ed's gonna do nothing exactly. It's a completely useless perk. He's playing with three perks. Doesn't have the rapid brutality. That's basically the difference in this game. And he doesn't have a rapid chase either, because although he got some hits at the start given away by uh, X9, he hasn't been able to close down any chases. Eventually gets Wispy, but they get a generator done, and this could be risky if there are any survivors around. No, they're not. He picks it up comfortably. They fully reset, and all the pressure he had right at the start completely goes. He's got one hook for one generator. Not what he wants on Doctor if he's playing for the swing bomb. Yeah, definitely, um, you know, you wanted to try to get a, a, a hook or two maybe at five gens, right? Uh, definitely more at this point at four. And this is where you power to get some information. Uh, you are going to get something. We're seeing, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> you got to be careful. Sometimes even comp, even comp players miss skill checks, you know? But, uh, but this is where we get, yeah, yeah. You get some info onto Jaw, and this is where, yeah, no, you're just going to leave. Because again, this is a situation where you want to confirm and we see that crow flying around. You know that person's going in to get the save in the distance. However, taking the long way, right? Taking the more scenic route, unfortunately not able to get there in time, just gets spotted out anyways. So you're put on notice. So you have to be careful here. Can we find potentially someone else rotating for the save? Or are we gonna get two people on gens and apply more pressure? No, you see the scratch marks, so you know that they were around. Yeah, scratch marks. I, I was wondering if he's going to have a look at his feet there because it looked like the scratch marks were right on him. Um, no, he's going to be confirming second stage. Um, but he does lose a generator for, the, for it in the process. And uh, this is scary. But in fairness, we saw Wispy do this exact same thing, right? He was in this exact same situation, um, not on the hook, <laughs> when he was playing killer uh, and managed to pull it back to a 4K1 with some nice plays. So Wee Jason's got to live up to that Wispy performance on X9's pick. It's a tough, tough position he's setting himself up for. But again, it was a tough win condition set by Wispy from a fantastic result uh, for X9. So yeah, so slowing the game down a little bit. We're just kind of waiting to see what the next big play will be. Did we have someone dead at three gens last game? I can't remember exactly, but... I think it was we, two gens. It was two gens. So just slightly behind uh, Wispy's pacing. But if anyone... Oh, no, you got the save. You got, got, the, got the save. Uh, or slightly ahead of Wispy's pacing, uh, you know, uh, with that logic. And yeah, this is going to be the tunnel out. So you have to body block here. You have to get as much time. Uh, but unfortunately, you're going to Shaq, but there's nothing at Shaq. That Shaq pilot got pre drop really early. Uh, and this is where, you know, if you're Haunt, uh, if you're Vistuous, you are slamming gens right here. You have to create some pressure. But that might have been enough time for Wispy to make a little bit more distance. He's going to opt to go. And again, FTP, let's go. We saw it in the builds earlier during match setup. Ah! And that's going to be the down onto Haunt. And again, obviously playing for fresh hooks or anything doesn't really matter if you just slam all five gens. So, uh, and then giving Wispy a second chance at life and letting him stick around for a little bit longer in this trial might just be enough. I think we actually saw a little bit of a blunder there from Wee Jason. I don't like saying this because these killers are super talented and they're super, super good at this game. But when we get to this level, it's good to see where they could have like, possibly played a little bit better. And I think when he kind of went towards Jar there and gave a shock, it gave Wispy a lot of distance and that allowed them to set up the save for the people. It might have still been close and they might have still got it off, but Wee Jason kind of teased towards Jar a little bit, uh, which he lost a lot of distance onto Wispy for. They're now fully healed. That's the survivor he needed to tunnel out because it's just two generators remaining for this win condition. Gets the first hit with no rapid brutality. He's going to have to have natural rapidness in his brutality to catch them up. I did a double pun there. He'll be so proud of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my son. <laughs> my son. <laughs> Definitely so proud. <laughs> but, but hey, one gen left. All four survivors alive. Wispy able to at least... I mean, Wispy's probably going down here unless he's the pilot right here. Yeah, I know. He's still not going to be able to make it. And there's no body blocks right here. Maybe. Oh, the pallet drop! Oh, no, you were correct. You said maybe you gave me a sliver of hope. And Wispy able to make it through buying a little bit more time. And all the gens are on the other side of the map. So, you know, that's a... You know, you just three-man one gen and it doesn't even matter. Because this is this person's already been pain rest too. So you're not even getting any value from that. And that potentially could be the win condition right here. Finally goes down Wispy. 
going to say goodbye to the trial, but yeah, that FTP, there it is, the win condition met. That FTP allowing Wispy to stay in the trial just a little bit longer to be everything, proved to be enough, and was able to hold his own long enough for his team to get the rescue or to get the, you know, the last gen done, and, you know, definitely proving to be worthwhile. Carry, we have a set. It's 1-1. Yeah, we're tying things up, and it's exactly what we want, right? We want a really, really competitive uh, performance between these two teams who are seeded so close to each other, um, which are going to taste them, though, Ed. Down you go, son. Uh, but yeah, it's exactly what we wanted and kind of what we expected, right? Um, because this is X9's pick, after all. They're, play, uh, they're playing Wraith, they're playing Doctor, they're playing these slower killers. And by the pace of things at the moment, I would say Sinners have the advantage going into it. Maybe at the end of this, we can dive into another campfire chat and see what these two sets reflect onto things. But my instinctive thinking is that with the fast-paced killers, Sinners just looks way, way better and way more able to have loads of different players there, uh, able to adapt. Um, and they can kind of pick which killer's going to play what. With the slower pace killers, it definitely seems like Team X9 for now. Wisp, we played that beautifully. And we, Jason, made a little impatient and a little bit poor decision making when it really mattered in tunneling out Wispy. Let's hop into the campfire chat and um, we'll have a think about how this is going to progress forward. So, SSB Kid, my current thinking is going to be a Sinners 3 2, um, them taking the final Blight set. Do you think anything differently? Do you think X9 can take one of these fast pace killer sets? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like I saw, well, did Wispy play Blight yesterday? And I think yeah. they, did, I'm, I can't remember. They, they, got a, they got a 4k one yesterday and the survivors got um, five gens done. Um, like the survivors for Team X9 got five gens done, uh, only giving away eight hook stages. Very similarly, Sinners, um, Cafulio got also a five. I've definitely butchered that name again, sorry. <laughs> um, he got a 4k one as well yesterday against Night Owls um, and their survivors only um they got five gens on only giving up six hooks so a slightly better performance but again against different teams yeah no though for sure like you said uh, you know very similar uh very similar um uh you know results uh, kind of matched on both sides but yeah if i think if any if any of this if the nurse or blight set i'm willing to i'm willing to you know gamble on the blight set being the one that X9 could take, uh, you know, take away from sinners right underneath the nose. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, obviously, this nurse that's going to be different. One of the crazy things is too, uh, to kind of note, um, and I mentioned this, I think, the last time that I, uh, I believe, last week against uh, against Elysium when X9 played. You know, a lot of these teams have like specialty killers, right? Yeah. Like yeah. they have someone, like for example, uh, if anyone is foolish enough to leave Blight open against Elysium, they just give V1 a call, and then mm -hmm. V1 shows up, and then 4Ks at, like, three generators or something, right? But, you know, like, but other than that, we don't see, you know, these players come out at all. You know, Wispy, though, is the one that's playing killer every single game, and then turning around and playing survivor every single game. So... It's a grueling set. It's a long set, you know, long match, you know, has to play five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sets, whatever you want to call it. And that can potentially add, you know, some like, you know, mental fatigue. But these guys are gamers. Wispy's done it. And obviously, X9 have proven to be successful in the past already. You know, obviously one of the newer teams, but still having a lot of success early on. So, you know, he can definitely do it. But, you know, some of these other killers coming in, uh, like if I'm not mistaken, we're probably going to see Phenom on the nurse uh, coming in around. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be like at that point, you know, you're coming in refreshed. There's good and bad things to it, right? You're coming in refreshed. You're coming in, you know, your 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 mind is fully clean, right? Your mental's fully clean when you show up. The one downside is you're coming in to potentially a high pressure situation. And if your mental is not in that, you're not already, you know, kicking it into overdrive, no pun intended, if you're a Billy main, <laughs> that, that can be really hard. Like you might, like they might just outpace you uh, in those situations. So uh, there's definitely advantages and disadvantages to, you know, to not playing uh, except for like one or two matches. And then there's obviously, you know, the fatigue that is uh, definitely um, worth mentioning uh, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing a ton of games in a row, right? Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think it's really worth mentioning if X9 do um, take this loser semifinals and indeed the losers finals um, next week, in two weeks time, they have a best of seven to play and they have a really, really small uh, roster. Four of their survivors, um, we've got Horn, Wispy, uh, Vistius and Jar, and then they have one other player who we haven't quite seen yet. 
whose name is very difficult pr to pronounce. It looks like something you're left with at the end of Scrabble. Uh, VTRXQ. Um, it's a really, really small roster. So I think you're right in the fact that Wispy has to play Survivor and Killer if they do uh, make it all the way to the grand finals. For seven sets, that could be really tough. Even five sets right now is going to be difficult if we're going on to the blight set. If we make it all that way, we've got Nurse, though, coming up. And a little bit of um, info there for maybe some new people in Dead by Daylight League. Let's break it down. Nurse is our tier one killer. She's going to be on Groaning Storehouse 2. Um, she's got a lot of add-ons banned. Her Eries are banned. Um, Jenna's Last Breath. Her ability to teleport back um, after she's used some blinks. Uh, and her lunge add-on, the heavy panting add-on, is brand as well. So we tend to see SSB, uh, the fragile wheels, the mangled add-on. But then we we got we got two different add-ons we can see as well for the second one. We either get the bad man's last breath, which is after you hit someone, you get undetectable, I think, for 20 seconds. Someone might have to check me on that. And then we also have the spoon add-on, the add-on um, coined by rats, um, which allows you to hear grunts of pain 50% louder, which when I watched it, um, the Night Hours game the other day, um, he actually got pretty good value out of that, able to track down survivors a little bit better. Which ones would you expect to see from Phenom and Wispy here? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like... Uh... I feel like the spoon and like Badman's. I I feel like when I when if I'm not mistaken, Rayoxium and I were were doing casting for for Night Owls um, uh, on Nurse as well. So uh, we saw Badman Badman's last breath as well. So that might be uh, potentially something we could see. Uh, you know, to be completely truthful, I'm not a hundred percent too uh, like knowledgeable on like the Nurse add-ons and like what they do. Obviously, because there's been a couple changes to them as well, right? So yeah. uh, you know that that makes it a, a you know hard for me to keep up, especially because you know <laughs> I'm not a I'm not S tier killer main, you know. So, um, but you know, regardless of whatever perks that we see or whatever add ons mm -hmm. that we see, um, you know, regardless, it'll still be you know something that I would assume is very very formidable, and we're gonna have to you know these survivors are gonna have to play out of their minds in order to get you know get any um get any value out of out of out of this game because again we talked about it at the beginning of the set before everything started this is a killer who can end chases very very quickly who can snowball very very quickly any second that you add in chase is so valuable and you have to get as much mileage out of those moments as you can yeah, I think you're right. I think talking about the small minute details between the add-ons may not matter in the grand scheme of things. We said this in the campfire chat. Nurse can swing one way or the other. It's um, it's a killer who can snowball or let every survivor get out the gate. Uh, it is Sinner's pick. They're the ones who feel most confident coming into this. Will they be able uh, to get some survivors out through the door? Because it's always difficult when a team goes first because you'd never know against Nurse if it's a good result or not, right? Traditionally, getting someone out through the door can be a good result, but it's equally as likely that your Nurse might blunder and more survivors get out. So it's always difficult to tell how well they've done compared to maybe some lower tier killers who you have more traditional um, results against. But let's see how Phenom does. Got, a, got four X9 survivors to face some survivors at the top of their game. They've made it all the way to the losers semi-finals this is set three it's one one apiece and phenom on nurse yeah here we go you know set number one already finds the first survivor and okay i was about to say we are going to see some jukes right here just some double backs and there is the bad man's last breath right there uh getting a little bit of mileage potentially uh that could affect your padding too so you have to be really careful if you are the survivors so you know we are going to get the down right here though spice from the shadow is going to get a lot of value as we go on throughout the games uh you know but yeah gonna be the first down on the wispy yeah wispy goes down and you can't hate anyone for having a short chance against her she's a very very strong killer um if anyone is confused with the map by the way we're on groaning storehouse to the second variation of groaning storehouse um came out probably about six months ago now um but yeah a short chase we're going to see a lot of those. It's just about the one or two chases. Can you make them the long ones? You can have short chases all game, or you can have one long clutch chase, which really makes the difference. Are any of the X9 survivors up to the task? Their first generator that we work on has been popped already, and Spies from the Shadows may be proccing as someone tries to sneak towards the hook. Yeah, that's the big thing, right? Is getting getting spies value when people are rotating over to get the saves that's like the that's like the biggest thing that we might potentially see 
so uh you know it definitely can prove to be uh to be something that you get a lot of value from but again one hook at five gents you just have to slam gents at this point you have to put yourself in the most favorable uh position that you can be uh in order to get these saves but you know we're gonna have to see if we can find a rotate right here we are going to and we're gonna get the trade on to uh onto um jaw but we're still gonna try to potentially get this tunnel out right here to confirm second stage, stage two, get everyone slugged. This is the snowball potential that we've talked about. Can you last in long enough? No, you can't. And that's gonna be another down as well. And yeah, just get the pickup immediately, right? Yeah, absolutely. And an aggressive play style we're seeing from X9. It's worked before, uh, but it can be risky. Traditionally, it's something you do when you're feeling like you're behind. Oh, but Jar pops unbreakable. It's tier one nurse. That means that park is allowed. Pops unbreakable, but now they've got to make serious distance. Do they have life? Can they get away? No, they go straight into a locker. Nurse blinks back towards them, maybe thinking they can't get there before a possible head on. I'm not sure what the play is there, but no, we get a save as well. Such aggressive play styles from X9, getting two Johns for it. This is amazing gen efficiency, as well as altruism from every aspect of the survivors. And Wispy just about dodges death from that swing of Nurse. Just about dodges death, but how much longer can you do it? Not much longer, and that's going to be the potentially the death onto Wispy. Gotta make sure no one's around. Can someone pull up last second and get a save? Oh, waiting out the DS. Oh, the smash hit. Yeah, and the smash hit, but still, you know, not not a not a ton of value. You know? Top ten underwhelming perks in Dead by Daylight. Number yeah. one, two, and three DS. I mean. Yeah, that's that, that's yeah. sad, man. <laughs> I, I, I will say that that's actually. I was going to say that was really smart waiting to use the DS until, uh, you know, understanding that he was going to be, you know, the tunnel out, and then waiting to use it. And the fact, first of all, one in four chance getting it on the wispy was was kind of crazy. Uh, second of all, you know, understanding to, that he needed to wait until he was definitely going to, you know, get hooked and get sacrificed to use it then just to buy a couple seconds of time, but unfortunately not able to buy enough. Still three gens popping, you know, this is not the end. Of, this is not the worst situation. This is not the worst pacing from X9. No, definitely not. And I really think the survivors have played super, super well here. Combining altruism, getting the right person tunneled out first because they had the DS and played it nicely to so stack it. Unfortunately, running in a straight line meant they didn't really get too much value out of that DS, but it is hard against Nurse. No, this is a really, really good start for the X9 survivors. Um, they can be feeling pretty happy. And let's see what Jar can cook right in Cobb Corner. Then Medkit, spoilers, means they can just hold W around here. How long can they go for? Not that long. Uh, Jar goes down, but buys a little bit of extra time as Nurse had to walk her uh, down. That's something nurses like to do, right? They like to walk survivors down. But remember, it costs a lot of time, and at this level, time is everything. Every second matters. Absolutely, every second matters. I mean, you know, these survivors have been proving it. Vistuous, uh, you know, and Haunt proving it by just, you know, pumping through gens as much as they could. So uh, that's going to be Pop potentially coming into this gen as well, but maybe going to wait it out just a little bit longer. And wow, the immediate rescue right there. Yeah, nice. Another aggressive save. Um, I can't remember which set it was. We saw one about a couple of weeks ago where the survivors played really, really passively. Uh, was not a fan of it, especially when they had a tough win con to play for. I much prefer this aggressive style against Nurse. It seems like you can get so much more done and it feels like you're not sealing your fate um, to a tough one. That was actually a dare there from Jar, which seemed like it got baited out. Phenom doing nicely to provide some nurse counterplay in addition to the oppressive power. Um, does really, really well to get Jar back onto the hook and doesn't have to be afraid of DS because one perk uh, for the team. Yeah, definitely one perk from the team right there. Only one uh, one per uh, per team. So, you know, just the fact that we, yeah. And it, like you said, it wasn't that hard. You know, as soon as we switched into frame, it was like immediate dead hard. Uh, unfortunately, not able to pan out the way that potentially wanted to because that would have been you know um maybe another few seconds of time bought but i think this is where you just confirm the stage you have two gens right here that have you know medium progress so obviously with the regression maybe not a whole lot but oh my god oh yeah you have to go look you have to go looking now you have to go looking those you two really gens do. are about those two gens can pop I mean, at the moment, you're playing for a 3k kind of 9, or maybe a 4k, but getting 5 gens done against a nurse is really strong. Nance is going to pop her one, and oh, gets the bad time no. skill check. That sucks. This is a lot of gen progression, 
And I'm not sure what she wanted there. Maybe going in for a trade. It looked like she would be too far away to get any of that done, especially as Lurse could body block a little bit. Blows up the skill check. I don't think it'll matter too much, though, because Venom is insistent on standing next to this hook. Now it's going to blink across, but can't get there in time. Loses two generators for the sacrifice. Is that a bad play? We'll have to see how it pans out with hindsight. But now we're heading into an endgame. Two survivors up. They're going to desperately try and get someone out through the door. Yeah, definitely going to get someone out through the door. And again, the advantages of getting... Um... The advantages of getting everyone, uh, you, 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 or you know, this advantage right here, you're gonna get out if you get one escape, it's gonna be with a pressure, and that I think is it's gonna be exactly what happens. Yeah, you just walk down, hit the blink. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is what it is. One out with a pressure, you know, nine stages, three pressures, not not the end of the not the not the end of the world, you know? No, absolutely not. That's a that's a really, really good result against Nurse. Of course, anything can happen. Um, you know, as we said before, you can get one out through the door, but then you could have a Nurse Blunder on your own side, um, and the other survivors get two out through the door. You never know. It's never over till it's over, but it's looking very, very good for X9. On Sinner's pick, this is something we were saying, are X9 going to dominate on the slower pace killers? Doesn't seem like it, because they've had a fantastic performance. Uh, on the survivor side. We'll have to see how Sinners are going to respond on their survivor side and how presumably Wispy can do on Nurse right after a quick little break. Here we go. The win condition set number three or killer number three is set. Wispy has to get a, you know, we, we had a one-man escape on a fresh hook. So nine stages, three fresh hooks, five gens. If Wispy can better that result, we are going to see X9 go up two to one. And, you know, based on my predictions, this was not the killer. If X9 was going to take a killer away from Sinners, this is not the one that I was expecting. Carry, this is going to be one for the books for sure, though. You know, they've been playing so well. Can Wispy match his survivor team and play just as well with this nurse? Look, I think there's a really big possibility that X9 do take this one. I think Wispy's more than capable with Nurse of securing this win condition, um, getting enough hooks. The only thing is, is I'm just kind of thinking forward. Can Sinners bounce back again uh, as Wraith? Wispy's Wraith is notoriously good. So I think there's actually a lot of pressure on Sinners now to really step up right here. I don't think they're going to have as big a safety as they might think falling back onto match four. This really needs to be it. Wispy's Wraith is so, so good. So let's see what they can do here. We saw the light shining on top of the hill. Maybe a decisive strike player trying to attack the chase. But Wispy not falling for it. Doesn't buy the bait. Goes straight after Bucky. He's going down towards the edge of the map pretty quickly. So actually, you know, yeah, definitely baits, top tier baits. Uh, actually, what I actually think might have been happening is because of the pathing Bucky, Bucky was taking, Wispy wanted to maybe cut Bucky off. So, you know, the flashlight, if you turn your camera over, you just get blinded anyways. So you're forced to just blink, at, you know, you're forced to blink at a certain angle. But regardless, Wispy was able to play that well enough in order to, uh, you know, reach uh, Bucky anyways, you know, like obviously because of the high mobility that Nurse has, like nur Nurse is like, I don't care about any of them. You know, like I, I can just get from point A to point B, no problem. Here comes the pop, the dying light and the rancor again, you know, Potentially, oh, wait a minute, Gustavo, what are you doing? The nurse is still here, but we're going to go for the tunnel out. That, that was top tier baiting from Wispy this time, not from the survivors. Baiting out Gustavo so nicely, unfortunate not to get anything off here. A hit onto Gustavo there would have been really, really nice for Wispy, even if they didn't follow it up and went straight for the unhook. Um, the un for the unhooked survivor, who, by the way, has been for the people, an early play there. Um, it would have been really, really rewarding um, because at some point Gustavo would have needed to heal if they didn't want to be one tapped in their chase. Wispy then following this one up straight on to the unhooked survivor. Goes around the corner, can't swing at this one. Bucky holding the corners nicely, gets a little bit of a head start. And here we go, survivor perspective onto Bucky. He's just heading for the corner of the map. He's not interested in playing around Shaq anymore. Goes towards the corner. It's going to take a while to get picked up. And yeah, this is definitely not the survivor they want getting tunneled out straight away. It's the unbreakable and delicious. Everyone's player, not the one they wanted at all. A bad start then for Sinners. Yeah, not the greatest start, but still we're able to pop a gen, uh, another gen in the distance and we're able to start another one as well. If this we can find the right gen that uh, I believe uh, it was Sweet Child who started, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a pop value for sure. But yeah, again, you know, this is a situation where you're in a pretty good spot where, you know, in a situation where all gens get popped, 
you at least have that rancor, right? In order to in order to commit, uh, get the get the down confirmed and get the kills confirmed. Uh, so that can be definitely something that uh, could could potentially prove to be troublesome for the survivors in the end. But Gustavo trying to stealth out, unfortunately, gets spotted out. Here comes the hit, but we saw that Jen about to pop any second now. Can we get the second down uh, or second unique survivor down? There? I think so, no. and if they do, it's going to be real, real trouble for Sinners. Wispy applying a lot of pressure across the map, going towards the interrupt. The save isn't going to get there in time. The save comes through, and it's Sweet Child, the healthy Kate. Everyone is injured, but no one's on the floor just now. Wispy has tunnel vision. The blinkers are on for Bucky's back. This is the pallet. Can't get this done. Gets it as they go down, and... As we saw, this wasn't the survivor they wanted to tunnel out. No decisive strike. They're going to be down on probably still three generators. Yeah, definitely down on still three generators. Going to have to get uh, potentially some pop right here, but this is going to get. We find it into survivor here. It's going to go. Jason down. Uh, not getting fully healed because of that FTP play from earlier. So, uh, going to come back to bite you just a little bit. Going to confirm another hook that's two unique survivors it you know and no matter what obviously you know having four pressures is also uh, a really good uh it, you know ending that third tiebreaker uh but, but yeah you got to confirm the nine stages here first so uh you know obviously if you can get the you know the way that these survivors are playing it we might see all five gens pop so it's gonna have to come down to how many stages can wispy get before uh you know any survivors potentially escape but if Wispy can lock this down and play really well enough, obviously we need to see some resets potentially, and that'll be uh, enough to get this win right here. Onto Sweet Child gets the down, and you know I might have to eat my words just now. <laughs> well, I, I I wouldn't be too strong on that because I think you're right that the survivors still could potentially get these last two gens on. However, I'm thinking at the moment, if it was, it's going to be for a lot of stages. They need some kind of really, really good chase. And unfortunately, this hill is not a great position for the survivors. It can be tricky to save right underneath a generator. Um, the gens left are quite close together, fairly close for four generators. It's, oh, it's looking really, really tough for Cinders. They could get all generators done, but can they keep it under nine stages? And remember, if Gustavo gets hooked, nine stages will, will be a win for x because that'll be four fresh. Oh, Gustavo spotted. Gustavo spotted as well. Has the bolt now. And can they get away fast enough? They can. They get the save. And this has got to be a really good chase. It has to be a great chase, but you're on the BL, so you don't have an exhaustion perk available. You're going to have to break line of sight a bunch of times and potentially get some juice. But it doesn't even matter because Wispy is so aware of the check spots, knows where everyone wants to go. And that's going to be the unique, uh, that's going to be the fourth unique fresh hook. And like you said, nine stages is no longer enough. You have to play this perfectly. And this potentially could be it. This could be a 2 1 lead that X9 will take if. Uh, you know, e even if we get all the gens pop, so you know, this is gonna be, uh, yeah, this is a great gameplay from Wispy. You gotta think that, you know, X the X9 survivor just set him up for, but in a situation where he could succeed. I think so, and this this next this next uh, part of the game is going to be super super important. It is um it is we Jason here with the spin boss going to go around. Whiskey Whiskey gets stuck a little bit, and there's one whiff. We need a few more of those for Team Sinners if we want to take their own um, killer pick. It's going to be tough. Gustavo with the second win gets healed on the go, and beautiful passing from we Jason sends Whiskey round the tree twice the wrong direction. A great start then for we Jason. And Wispy's gonna switch targets. No, he, oh, he can't decide. He can't choose. He wants to go to one side of the room and paint it, but goes back to the other side. He cannot choose. Eventually settles on Wee Jason. Uses two blinks for that, but Wee Jason didn't get a lot of distance. Now has to play a panic against the nurse. Waves and eventually goes down. Yeah, great stuff right there. Great pickup. That flashlight was around, but obviously not gonna be able to set up for it. We're gonna get this hook right here onto Jason, and yeah, I mean everyone's fully healed, but now this comes. Yeah, I feel like slowly but surely this is the word of attrition, and like you said, lots of pressure on this match right here because this was the sinner's pick. But Wispy showing that he can hold down the fort, showing that it doesn't matter how many sets I play, I'm still gonna bring it every single time. Wispy showing himself to be the workhorse for X9, potentially able to confirm this lead but they do get the save onto Jason so gotta get maybe one or two more stages and then that is going to be it for sure so can he do it yeah two stages is all sinners can give up now Wispy is going to be hunting them down 
relentlessly and they've still got two generators to go this is one's looking more and more impossible i wonder how much progress the other generators have because if some of those are slightly ticked this could be doable with some kind of end game clutch i'm guessing with a hatch play as some survivors leaving the door a bit like we saw in the night hours game the other day something like that could be possible um they're gonna have to really cook up something if they want to tie it but remember folks this is a best of five so even if they do lose this they will have a chance but again it's gonna be wispy on wraith which is never something you want to run up against now can wispy spot his next survivor and i think he has i think he spotted sweet child yeah, definitely spotted for sure. And yeah, just gonna have to wait, get the recharge just to zone Sweet Child out into a more favorable situation. Use Blink on top of each other, yes, and that's gonna be the hit right there. Uh, gets a little bit of distance to this uh, tile right here, but yeah, gets the immediate pallet drop. That might be. Yeah, that was. Ooh, okay. That was Ooh. our life player, I believe. Yeah, it was a life play and a really nice pathing as well. They get a gen done for it. Now they've got to absolutely tank this last gen and a massive play needed here from Sweet Child who bolts the right, goes the right direction. Wispy messes up the second blink and that could be the little slip up that Sinners need. Can they capitalize now? Sweet Child running for the hills, but it's Wispy on top of one. Gets the long blink onto them and should confirm it here. No, they jump into the locker in the nick of time, buying more time for their team. Gonna go for a spin around, can't get enough distance. Sweet Child with a nice chase extension but gustavo comes in out of nowhere and just gives a hit away for free oh my god and now the snowball's happening this is the situation that we talked about that nurse can do but again you just gotta get your hooks right here that's two survivors down so you know that's that's the win condition man yeah and i'm just wondering what just happened there because sweet show did such a good job like <laughs> i'm preventing it and everyone just kind of came in. I mean, eight stages, it wasn't quite done just then. You had, you know, nine stages was the win con, so they didn't quite need to throw it just there. And everyone just went down. I thought they were really, really on for it. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, everyone went down right there. And yeah, we are going to get this chase onto Gustavo and definitely well within Whiskey's line of sight. Can we see potentially the down or can we see just the juice? But at this point, the juice is just for pride because you know, this is pretty much the game. I mean, you cannot, there's no way you can outrun a nurse for so long. Yeah, it just eats through the dead heart, great stuff. I mean, you know, outrunning a nurse for so long and getting the pickup and going to do a gen, like it just, you know, obviously, you know, next to impossible, if not impossible. And that's going to be the set going to X9, taking a 2-1 lead, going into set number four with the Wraith and, you know, this might be a death sentence for Sinners. They've had such a Cinderella story coming in virtually, you know, to a lot of people, not really sure what the expectation was. Came in, went down losers round one, but then made the losers run. Uh, definitely one to remember, but it might be ended right here. Unless they can really lock it down and deny Wispy the Wraith set. Yeah, it might be over if that doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's going to be really tricky. I was just thinking back to the, like the All Hallows League, even DVD League Season 8, Wispy's Wraith was always notorious. I mean, Wispy really stepped up in the All Hallows League compared to their performances in Season 8. I mean, I feel like that's the tournament that really kind of turned them around for DVD League. Um, so yeah, their Wraith, I think, is just on fire at the moment, as is Wispy. I mean, carrying their team on the killer side all the way through this tournament. Let's hop into the campfire chat just to break down this game, then we can keep talking about how amazing Wispy's Wraith is going to possibly be. I just want to quickly talk about that last play. It, I feel really let down, essentially, because um, the, it seemed like Sinus had kind of given themselves a slither of hope. I think possibly, looking at the bills there at the end of the game, Gustavo's flashlight might have been the reason he went in for that. They wanted to get the flashlight done and then just kind of like send it for the end with a really, really good lead. Maybe they felt like that, although that last chase was good, maybe not quite good enough SSB to uh, completely turn around that game for them. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the the chase on the Sweet Child was, you know, there was definitely a lot of jukes going on. There was definitely a lot, uh, you know, and then we also saw jukes on the Jason as well, uh, you know, going around that tree, you know, and, and I mean, there was a lot of great plays from Sinners, but it just felt like the, you know, the the stage was set in, in, in not the best way possible. I mean, that's a, you know, getting a getting a one person out, you know, nine stages, three fresh hooks. I mean, that is a that is a tall order, uh, you know, on on nurse as well, just because, you know, the ability, you know, when you are dealing with these S tier killers, 
I feel like typically you see, you know, you see that you see, you don't see all five generators get done unless like, you know, there's like blunders going on, right? So that just makes it that much more difficult for survivors to, or for, you know, for sinners, I mean, to, to match that. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure. You got to go for some crazy plays. And with those crazy plays, there's a ton of overextensions. And, you know, that leads to mistakes and that leads to snowball potential. And that's exactly what we saw at the very end. But yeah, I mean, you know, that was kind of, um, that, that was definitely a, a statement game from X9. As we go, like you said, onto set four, onto the Wraith. Temple of Purgation. I mean, what what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts going into it is that um with X9 starting out on Wraith, we're gonna get a bit of a different um a different sorry, <laughs> a sort of different troll than we did in that one before. Because remember, a big fact on that one before is we saw the Wraith, uh sorry, we saw the nurse for Team Sinners basically face camp at the end, allowing a survival out through the door. Um, this time it's X9 going first, so they're setting the win conditions and going with Wraith on Temple of Purgation, I think... Um, oh, sorry, I just got to mention as well, we're going to have a five-minute timeout for X9, so we may hop to a quick uh, be right back screen before we jump into this game. Um, but <laughs> before we do that as well, as I was saying, X9 are setting the pace for this one. They're setting the win conditions. Uh, I think we're going to get another slow game out of wispy he's going to really control it and basically prevent as many you know prevent as survivors getting out the door completely if he's on form he'll go for some extra gen protection as well um but temple obligation is a rough one and as you were saying right at the start i think windstorm could be a very very likely add-on yeah i mean you know i i i'll i'll die on the hill you know no pun intended but you know because it is dbd but i i will say that i feel like on a map where you know, there's a lot of good chains uh, in terms of like tiles that can chain really well together. Having windstorm in order to block, you know, block someone's pathing towards a window, towards a pallet, I feel like can be big. You can deny the survivors the resources and then force, you, you know, force them in rough situations where when you uncloak, it's almost guaranteed to hit. As opposed to where you have to uncloak and then maybe do the mind game of like, am I going to fully uncloak? Am I going to not? You know, and obviously the add on that makes you uncloak faster. Obviously, the, you know, the bing bong timer, right? Or like the bing bong sounds are a little bit off sync. So then you have to guess, right? So that makes it really difficult. That provides a lot of mind games. And that first hit can't be everything, right? And again, like you said, are we going to slow down the game? Are we going to bounce from survivors, from survivor, from survivor? You know, just making sure everyone's injured and then forcing these resets. Because again, if you get pounced on in a dead zone, you're guaranteed a down if someone's injured. So that that there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. But you know, that's gonna be it's gonna be one it's gonna be a great one for sure. Yeah, these answers, they will come with time. Speaking of time, X9 are taking their permitted five-minute timeout just to catch their breath, and I don't blame them. They've just played three intense cents back-to-back. They've got this one up. They don't want to blunder it, so we'll be right back in a short... Uh, with a we'll be right... I need a break as well. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back after a short break with the fourth set of the game. Will X9 close out their killer pick on Wraith? Or will Sinners be taking this to a game five light set we'll find out after a short break welcome back i mean you know we had a a great a great um great nurse match and now we are in set number four where potentially we might be saying goodbye to sinners if wispy can provide a well enough performance and that's gonna be the pallet drop and this is exactly you know you have to be careful oh never mind there's a pallet here i was about to say that was such a great uncloak rotating over to a different survivor i mean that's uh that, that's uh some smart play but again got not gonna have the windstorm but still able uh to get this um oh no gets the miss the anyways that's unfortunate oh never mind well who needs windows right <laughs> an uncharacteristic whiff but then the ping it through the window is gonna clutch that one up for wispy so feeling okay and this should be our life i believe if kate is still the life bear as we know in the last round no they're not just staying around this tile a little bit longer now towards this pallet which is much shorter than it is on your mcmillan tiles and wispy winning it correctly means he can go around and get the first down that one goes down straight away and that perk in the bottom right i believe is forced hesitation you know, if anyone runs Forced Hezzy, it's definitely Wispy. We've seen Wispy run this a bunch. And, you know, regardless, you know, ha you know, 
more often times than not does get some value out of it so we could see you know history repeat itself right there getting a ton of force has value so uh, i mean that's going to be one that he might be able to get something out of here but only one slowdown only with the pain res uh but still again sloppy butcher definitely an s tier perk on race just because it limits uh you know how fast you can get these resets and it does force survivors to you know reset and whenever they do get chased off the reset then obviously you know you have to spend that time resetting again it's so strong so gonna get a cutoff right here on to gustavo and that's gonna be the tag can we get more out of this are we going to commit to the gustavo no it looks like we're just gonna go back and return to this hook right here where you know if you get the tag early enough no someone's right there there might be another person around i'm not really sure no it's only just that one person that's gonna be the tag right here though yeah, going all the way around, and I think we've got the Wraith also glitch as well. If you do see it, don't be spooked. I know it's a scary game, but Wraith is completely fine. Wispy is intact. Uh, not the same for Kate, though. She's just come off the hook and in a very, very tricky situation. Uh, drops the pallet straight away. Wispy baits it out, gets the Shadow Dance kick onto it, so it breaks quickly. And now we're just rinsing all these pallets around the edge of the map. Remember, this map has been nerfed significantly for survivors. It's nowhere near as big as it used to be. Wispy breaking it, forcing Kate towards the top of the hill. Unless she's got balance landing, this is going to be a little bit over for Kate here. Doesn't even go off the edge of the hill. Goes down exactly where she went down the first time. And it's going to be put straight back onto the hook. A tunnel out then for Wispy. As she puts sweet, uh, Kate onto her second hook. One gen gets done though. Yeah, one gen gets done, and there has to there has to be pressure on uh, maybe at least another gen, maybe two gens if they play it smart enough. But again, Gustavo trying to stealth out, no one home for it. Are you going to be able to make it to this tag? Yes, you are, and that's the advantage of the Wraith Uncloak with that extended lunge after. So, uh, going to end up rotating right here again. Every tag is so important because sometimes you know to counter sloppy some players don't even don't even want to heal right just because it takes too long you know but and then you know the disadvantage with that is if you get found you get tagged immediately and you're dead so you know there's so much counterplay to it there's so many like you know moving parts to to playing around that so you know every tag is so important here can we see jason if anyone's gonna have to rotate over it has to be jason right yeah, I think we're saying with moving past, I think the biggest thing is that the communication has to be on point. If you're going to play injured, you need to know where your wraith is at all times. And then being a little bit invisible, as well as undetectable, means you've really got to be on point with your callouts. Then letting Sweet Child die on the hook there. Maybe doesn't want to get, give like a trade where uh, Survivor could give up another pain rest stack for it. Um, just allowing them to die, cracking on with some gens. Gustavo gets found and should make it to this jungle gym pallet in time. They do indeed go and drop it straight away. Discipline, or oh, they do drop it, but they hold W, which means they can get away to this tile. Wispy has to respect it. And now we've got another 50-50 kind of mind game coming out. Wispy baits out the pallet drop. Gustavo throws it down, doesn't want to risk getting hit here, but can they path it back? Or can Wispy get the body block in time? He does indeed, and that means it's going to be a tag straight onto Gustavo, who's going to be forced to stay at this pallet gym. All the life. Oh, gonna get forced to stay, but there's our life player that we've been trying to search for. Finally makes it through, but, you know, Wispy is smart, smart right there. Just gonna opt to leave and potentially gonna get found uh, by another another survivor or another survivor gonna get found. And that's gonna be the cutoff right here. Can you get that window? No, that's gonna be the down immediately and another pain res hook. I mean, look, the, the fact that we saw, you know, uh, I feel like the reason why Wispy went for that for that swing immediately after dropping the pallet is because Sweet Child earlier dropped the pallet and immediately vaulted, right? And so maybe, you know, trying to match uh, the similar play styles, maybe try to guess correctly. Not going to work out, but still was able to get the tag anyways. And now I think has Gustavo in an unfavorable situation. Has the Shack pallet right here, but, you know, going to have to immediately drop it. Yeah, not even trying to overcomplicate the situation here, but this is potentially going to be another. Yeah, this is just trimming the fat on the resources. Can you find? Yeah, I don't think this cloak is fast enough. Oh, but you read. Uh, you, oh, read you read those, it. You read it. He reads those as Wraith. And this is what makes Wispy's Wraith so scary. Not only does he seem to be everywhere at the map all at once, not allowing survivors to do anything. He just gets those critical reads when he needs them. He's going to dodge that flashbang. And Wee Jason is looking to get hit by a tag here. They can make it to this very, very short rock, which they just you just cannot drop. The second you drop it, you're dead. Gets hit by it anyway. Has to play Shaq. 
near the down survivor and this is looking like complete ropes now bolts fastly thanks to shadow dance again which means there is just isn't a lot of space for him to work with goes for the swing but luckily for we jason they made it through that time they don't have shack palette here to work with so goes for the bolt doesn't want to double vault it as wispy goes through and this is just so so tight how are they going to play this they get to the window once again beautiful play from we jason wispy is one of the best rates in the world but we jason is just making him look like he's picked up the killer for the first time sends him with the loop the loop but now the unclug will come in in time no way he bolts this wispy's not going to swing for it though and eventually does go down for good time where is bucky's bucky just been cracking on with the gem for the win condition or are they going to pick up gustavo so many questions unanswered but there it is right there shouts to production coming in the clutch as always <laughs> that's going to be the that's going to be the sec the third gen done right there and yeah just playing for the win con at that point i mean at this point it's going to have to be you know there i feel like it would be very unlikely yeah there it is there it is yeah, the fact caught out the ace. He did have balance landing, but now has to somehow basically make it to Gustavo, get the pickup trade, or do something here. But I think all the pallets around here have been pretty much rinsed. Good body blocking, trying to make it to the pallet, but no, gets caught out. Wispy body blocks it in time, and with that, all the survivors down. Two gens still to go. They only got three gens. It's a tough, tough win con for sinners, but I've got to say, it's what we expected from Wispy's race. Yeah, Wispy's Wraith uh, definitely has earned his stripes, right? Able to, uh, you know, has a lot of great results with it. And I mean, again, this is the pick, right? So the fact that we saw, you know, this win condition uh, or this uh, win condition set at such an unfavorable situation for Sinners, I mean, that, again, the, that, the, the end is in sight potentially for Sinners, for Team South America. If they can't get this uh, win condition broken, or they, they can't at least meet it, 4K, 4K3, uh, definitely difficult, especially against someone like Rage. Yeah, especially as we've seen, like, in the previous sets, um, <laughs> X9 always doing at least four generators, so if they were to live up to what they've been doing before, even, you know, against Billy, against Doctor, against Nurse, they've still been getting four generators out. Wraith is a tough one because the tier, um, Wraith is a tier four killer, so the survivors don't have as well equipped perks, but if they do as well as the Doctor, they should be getting it out. We'll have to see, we will have to see. It's all coming up. Um, as soon as we wrap up this trial, we'll have a quick look at the perks to make sure we got them all right. But yeah, it's all on Sinners now, and there's nothing more to say other than they have to deliver. Yeah, the stage has been set. The stage has been set, the win condition has been set, and it's all up to them to see if they can deliver right after this break right then this could be sinner's final dance their last dance and it's we jason gotta prevent these x9 survivors com from completing more than three generators if they complete three generators and kills everyone it will be a tie any more than that x9 will win any less we're going to game five on blight and the momentum will all be with sinners so a big big um, task now for we jason ssb kid it's not looking likely for sinners but it is doable yeah, not likely, but not impossible, right? That it's always, you know, the beautiful thing about, you know, this game that we all love so much is that anything can happen. We've seen teams come out of nowhere and produce good results. We've seen, you know, no man's land basically death sentence situations, and we've seen people come out of nowhere and bring it all the way back. However, that is going to be the down onto Vistuous. And I mean, look, this is a good place to start. This is a this is the way to start this off, right? having a little bit of a different build you know honestly again these are these are pretty much set in stone already to begin with uh, in terms of the killer builds fact that we see three slowdowns might be perfect it might be perfect for you know the stage might be set for jason to pull off the unthinkable I think, I think the biggest thing is that first chase was pretty darn quick. I mean, not a lot of gem progress will have been done. He didn't have corrupt intervention, so the first chase there was really, really important and gets another hit through the pallet. It, Wispy's been tagged. They get a quick early save. Now, does he go for a tunnel out? If he can get it, if he can locate X9, um, <laughs> sorry, X9 Vistisius complete but that again i'm terrible with names um this would be really really big for him he does he finds him at shack now he needs to close out this chase can he be just as clinical as he always is no they vault in he loses that 50 50 which could have been massive now shack pallet goes down and he's losing precious precious time for this win con yeah definitely losing a lot of time wait that was a double back that was a double back oh. from oh no he's not there he's been gone already has to cloak to close the distance off but makes it 
to another pallet it makes it to another tile this is a this is a guess right here if you guess correctly this is the Ooh. down if you do Dang. guess correctly that's gonna be the down right there you see the little bit of a shake like oh i cannot believe you just went for that and that's going to be stage number two for Vistress. Yeah, now he's got to make sure he can go out there, apply eruption. Um, well, actually, Ruin's still up, so he won't be able to apply eruption. And maybe that's a little bit of an annoyance for his build, because if they, you know, until they cleanse Ruin, he can't use one of his perks to help slow down this game. And he needs everything he can to meet this win condition. Getting the tunnel out, though, pretty early on is a nice sign for him. Getting tags can be good as well. He's got Sloppy Butcher. Survivors won't want to waste time healing. Here we go. Then the second gen gets popped, and now he needs everyone down before another one does. Goodness, gonna opt to go for you know just to just to change uh, change targets a little bit, a little bit of strategic uh, placement right here, just because he wants to potentially deny you know this uh, this rescue wants to confirm the kill, but they're resetting, so uh, that does take a little bit of time. That is precious time that eats that eats at you, right? So now can we get the rotate over to get this save? And that's gonna be the tag on the wispy, just having been reset and gonna end up getting tagged again. This might be a hit. That's so smart. That's so smart from Jason. Not going for the tag, knowing that the tag would give you a speed boost to make it to the hook and get the rescue. Uh, yeah, and the third gen getting popped as well. Um, but news in from behind the desk is that Sin has got another lifeline. As you might have seen there, while the crawl was running into the wraith, Chase was not starting. The game was bugged. Nothing in our control. And I think we are going to get a restart. We are indeed Sinners with another lifeline. Oh, what, what, a, what a situation we have before us. We're going to head to a quick technical break to make sure this gets cleared out. But um, yeah, it seems like Sinners get a second bite of the cherry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back after that admittedly unfortunate restart i mean it's never nice when we have to go through these things unfortunately there was the chase bug that the chase wasn't starting for we jason a game impacting bug it was noticed right at the start we were waiting to see if it got fixed unfortunately it didn't so we were forced to pull a restart what this does mean though is that all um players are allowed to change their builds but it looks like ssb kid we jason hasn't yeah we jason looking uh looking to kind of trust you know uh the gut picks right you know the initial picks on uh onto his killer builds but yeah i mean look it's never you know just to kind of recap it's it's never it's never great when we have to restart obviously there's like there's restarts when people don't bring the right perks the right offerings the right you know etc but sometimes there's these restarts you can avoid and unfortunately right there though you're gonna have to keep chugging along though shout outs to everyone behind the scenes making everything happen you know obviously in a timely fashion as well so we are going to get this chase right here though onto Vistress. not before we got two tags onto onto wispy and haunt yeah, and I, th I think we got a different kind of start now. Before, we got a really, really quick first down, applying pressure straight away. This time, we're going for multiple tags onto different survivors. Um, but even so, it's a really, really tough win con to play for. Remember, these survivors, if they pop four generators, they will have won it. So they're moving towards the lower finals. Sinners then on their last legs, they're on their last lifeline. No more restarts. Hopefully coming in this game. And Haunt is going to be the first survivor down on the ground. They hit the deck right next to a hook. Will it be a pain resonance? this hook this could be massive massive indeed for sure if we can get the pain you saw the bypass on the one hook so you gotta yeah. think that this one is gonna be the pain rest look right here uh and again like you said not changing the build you don't really get to talk about the hope oh that's so, so unfortunate close. literally a millisecond away from confirming uh confirming that pain rest and that pain rest would have hit really hard especially that 99 uh percent in terms of progress right here gonna opt to just get the tag on the wispy they spent some time working on the gen they spent some time resetting as well so you know great stuff right there great coordination from the survivors so far but we are going to see either tag onto wispy and then moving right there onto vistress or jaw depending on who got the rescue and that looks to you know i'm not really sure who that was but regardless we are going to see uh you know the quick uh the quick strategic targeting you know into uh into haunt right there really good stuff are we going to get that down right here potentially that's gonna be it right there and yeah i mean again this is sort of uh you know sort of the same kind of pace that we saw earlier uh regardless still kind of working out you know both sides so kind of a little bit of the same situation as we saw before we had to take the reset so uh this is going to be the, the you know, uh 
again more resets right here happening in terms of um you know trying to heal these survivors back up trying to fight through the sloppy valley understanding that they can make this happen are we gonna get it we are gonna get it and you know regardless that's you know that's one person tag instead of two so you know it's good value regardless yeah, two, two, like, split-second situations that have gone the way of X9. That first pain res and that heal as well. So, so close. And now Wee Jason has got to come up with something clutch. He's got to cook up something. Is he going to deny the full reset? He is. He comes in in the nick of time. Wispy here. Won't have dead or they haven't been hooked yet. Doesn't need to worry about that. Gets the down onto them. Horn gets released. He's going to leave them slugs. Oh, is he going to go for this? Oh, whiffs through the pallets. He's going to spend some time going for this, which means he probably can't go for the tunnel out. Gets the hit all the way through, but could get two survivors down in the same situation. No, he's going to head back to hook. Wants to prevent these survivors um, from healing completely, but this could be a little bit of a misplay because he has no idea where they are. He's got to find them quick. Yeah, he's got to find them quick, and right there is going to be the pickup right there Ooh. onto Wispy. You know... Fast pace again, just gonna just gonna chug along as per usual. I mean, this is the uh, this is again, you know, the X9 playstyle where you just play everything so quickly. Yeah, and I think this this was just a bit of a misplay. He could have had two survivors down right next to each other instead. There's been a full reset across the map, and he doesn't even get this. Shack Pallet is gonna go down. This is a tricky place to um, this is a tricky place to chase. They get the vault through. They're gonna head forward, and they could even make another pallet. Are they gonna make this? Is the pallet spawn there for them? We'll see as we go through. It was, and they're playing it patiently. Horns with their respect dies on the pallet and if someone's around here we jason's gonna have to spend time looking it is indeed wispy here he's ready for it could have gone for the vault there but no gets tagged and just gonna move away precious time cost for we jason ones that he cannot afford yeah unfortunate right there not going to able to get the save right but still buying a lot of time right here and again this is uh this is the confirm onto haunt but a gen's popping right now so you know gonna have to create a little bit more pressure um, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, this is um, not the greatest situation to be in, but you still at least have ruins still up, and you have three pain red slugs as well, so this could potentially hit hard, uh, you know, in as we approach this mid-game. Yeah, I think that's why he decided not to chase Wispy towards Shaq here. If he can chase survivors away from their gens, it's going to be passively regressing thanks to Ruin. And if they do want to cleanse it, they're going to spend time doing that and we'll be met with a surprise eruption, especially seeing as how Weej hasn't had the chance to change his build. Yeah, reset's coming in, and this is looking quite good actually now for Weej Jason. He's got a survivor dead, and they can only pop one more gens for the tire conditions, and then they'll have another crack at it as survivors. We'd get the full um, reset on the match. So not bad for wee jason he just needs to be clinical and maybe cook up one or two extra magical plays absolutely i mean this is kind of the you know i'm not sure what the play is going to be here on both sides because you know do you do you crack the do you just you know slam the last gen and hope that you get that you at least tie or do you try to go for the win condition at the cost of another survivor dying and it looks like we're going to go for the form or for the latter of uh, the former i mean going to you know get the you know going to get the rescue right here a little bit of an aggressive god palette right here gonna have to drop it but no man the latency issues you got to be a little bit safer than that unfortunately that's not going to be uh that's not what you wanted and now this situation is a lot harder now and this I will think... be tilting for X9. I mean, given they had like a pretty decent start the first time round, and unfortunately we had to restart. Wispy going down through that pallet. He is going to be enraged and reads the balance landing off. Hold on a second here. If he finds the last survivor, Detective Sap, I mean, he can win it for Sinners and we've going straight to a game five. No, um, no reset. This is to us though, speaking of reset, manages to pick up Wispy and they're back on their feet again. But all the momentum is with Wee Jason. Yeah, all the, all the momentum's on to Jason right now. And yeah, finds himself in a favorable position. I mean, and Ruin is just going to eat at these gents for sure. I mean, look, this is, uh, this is what a way to bring it back. This is not the result that X9 wanted, unfortunately. And, you know, again, it's all about the mental here, right? Can you, you know, either, you know, outlast Jason enough to, you know, to still, you know, at least tie or can you, you know, maintain that mental in order to force it into a game five and still be in a good headspace? That's going to be the most important thing right now as we get another down onto Jaw and, I mean, just bouncing survivors back and forth. I mean, why not, right? 
Yeah, this is this is just so tricky now because they're just trading hooks back and forward. They're not getting any gem progression. We've still got Ruin to play with and there's still a pain res out there, I think, on Detective Tap. He's still got his one to be used. So a lot of gem protection now for Wee Jason. They're going to be happy at home at the Sinner's Camp. I can't say for the X9 thing, but I mean, this is what happens. And unfortunately, this is the nature of the game that we all enjoy to play. It can, There are bugs that occur and it's just completely out of our control. You've got to be ready for it and you've got to have the mental to keep on going because for me, X9 have blundered this middle game. Yeah, unfortunately not going to able to pan out the way that he wanted to. And yeah, that's uh, like you said, definitely definitely a blunder right here, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, still not out of the woods. Just that, you know, you had a, at least you had a lead. So you can definitely uh, still make something happen here, potentially in the last game. I mean, look, getting these rescues, just bouncing back and forth. Yeah, you got to bounce in there. Yeah, just to uh, allow the uh, allow the. Um, you know, just a little bit more time for your survivors in order to get the rescue, potentially reposition or reset, depending on what you want to do. But yeah, I mean, look, that's uh, yeah, this was a turn of events to say the very least. Yeah, it was completely, and got to give credit to Wee Jason. Um, he is. He has come out super, super strong. They're just trying to power that last gen, though. But I think it's a head-in-hands moment for X9. He's come out so, so strong there. Such a tough win condition to make against Wispy's Wraith. And he has done it for Team Sinners. I mean, take nothing away from his performance. He's absolutely smashed it. Yeah, definitely, absolutely smashed it. I mean, look, you know, sometimes things happen uh, regardless, but you are in, you know, a situation where if you can make it happen, you can make it happen regardless. And here we go. Going to get the 4K at three generators well above the win condition, able to force this to a game number five. Game number five. I mean, it's what we wanted after all, and we thought it would separate these two teams. Not quite in the fashion that we imagined. I mean, Sin has taken out um, X9 pick as Wraith, and um, X9 taking out Sin as pick of Nurse. That flipped around, but the end result is still the same. We're going to be heading to Blight for a game five. And as we do that, we will go into our campfire chat to... Um, we will go in our capture fight to anticipate that coming forwards and maybe break down a bit of this set that we've just seen. Um, but as we do it, I do hear boss music. The boss of DVD League is coming to give a quick little housekeeping clearance in our wonderful campfire chat. Yeah, hello everyone. First of all, thank you, Carrie and SSB. We are here with the housekeeping just to explain a little bit the previous trial because we have noticed there was some confusion going on. Why was the restart being called so late? And uh, we do understand, of course, it does look bad when a survivor team already smashed through a couple of generators in the win condition, especially when it's the team you're rooting for is coming close. We very much understand that it's then a little bit upsetting when we are going for a restart, but two things to throw into this to, um, to share a little bit um, of transparency here. The first thing is, um, this bug is not as clear as, for example, a balance offense. It does appear when the first chase is coming in, then the teams need to point it out according to the rules, and then starts the process of communication. And of course, we are hoping that it's a singular bug on one specific change. We know from the past some bugs are changing when a survivor is injured, when the survivor or the killer are switching health states or their uh, current form. So for example, coming out of invisibility, going back into invisibility, sometimes um, these bugs are fixing themselves. So what we are trying to do is always avoid a restart because we are well aware a restart is the worst that can happen. Perks will be available now, so teams will need to adjust might be fine, but it also messes up with the strategy you might have prepared. So you want to take a little bit of time and you really hope that the bug is fixing itself. Wasn't the case here, but some time passed because we have seen uh, Wraith traveling a little bit of temple. So that also causes some downtime where we don't have the chance to confirm the bug. And then after two, three occurrences when the bug was still present and we can all agree a chase bug that removes any sort of bloodlust, any form of chase potential is very, very game impacting on an M1 killer. X9 would have received the same. So it took a little bit of time to confirm and then the restart was called. Uh, the second thing is, once again, uh, we do understand it's very hard when your survivor team 
that you're rooting for is on the way for a very nice win condition here and taking the set points. But sometimes it does take a little bit of time to go through a bug, confirm it actively by the evidence that is shared by the team, because you also want to prevent a false restart call, because that would be even worse, forcing the teams out of the trial when someone has a good start. So if we do it, and it is always heartbreaking to do it, and we would wish that restarts would never be needed, and we wish that bugs would never occur, because then we have the most competitive gameplay. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and some things just trigger a little bit later in the trial than a balance offense or one survivor not loading into the trial. So what we're asking for, maybe with this transparency, um, have some understanding with us, have some mercy with us as well. We know it's bad. Every form of restart sucks. Sometimes, unfortunately, we are not able to change it and we had to wait a little bit to confirm it. I'm throwing it back to the casters. They will take it away. Thank you everyone for listening and uh, hopefully also for your understanding. Thank you, Daryl, and thank you for that clear, brief uh, explanation of why the restart occurred. I was going to dig into the Wraith set um, before we jump into our Blight set, but I think it's good to put that behind us now. An unfortunate occurrence, something we couldn't avoid, uh, but dealt with very, very well. And thank you to our production team for dealing with it quickly and efficiently so we could get a fair result. The fairest result that we could muster from the event. As I speak here, we're heading now into the Blight set. We mentioned this um, earlier. We've mentioned this a few times today. Both these teams played Blight yesterday. Wispy got a 4K1. Or so did uh, for X9. So did Cafulio for Sinners. He got a 4K1 as well yesterday. A little bit different in the Survivor's um, results. Nothing significant there. So it looks very, very even going into this. I've just got one question, and I'm sure you'll dissect it. Who is going to win this one? You know, it's going to come down to, you know, there's uh, there's two paths, I think, at this point in time. Obviously, you know, we said we're putting everything kind of past us, you know, but it's definitely, you know, um, the psychological warfare is definitely something worth noting. You know, if they can hold it down, if they can, you know, like like we are going to put this behind us, but can they do it? You know, if the survive, if X9 can put the, you know, the situation that was unfolding, if they can just, you know, mentally reset, put themselves in a position where they're just locked in for game number five, then it's still anyone's game, you know, but obviously, you know, as someone who plays competitive games as well, sometimes when you're not fully there, you know, you are prone to making a lot more mistakes. So it's just going to come down to whether or not they can, you know, they they can just lock in and and if that happens it could still be anybody's game and if not Cafulia might take this momentum in order to push south america into losers finals but yeah it's gonna be one for the books for sure i mean again both both teams have played this killer both teams have had similar results so yeah definitely evenly matched uh just the way we like it especially for a match deciding set yeah, and I feel like I, I was going to comment on the momentum for you know both these teams coming in here. I feel like both teams now have kind of had a breather. We had that whole chaos in the set before. This just feels like a standalone game, right? Nothing else matters before. These two teams are really, really talented. They've been together. I mean, Team Sinners have been together for ages. X9 Wispy is just, you know, as we say, throughout a lot of tournaments recently he's a phenomenal killer he'll be able to bounce back both these teams will have a full mental reset they'll be going into this with <laughs> all guns blazing they're going to be swinging at this one um so whatever your predictions are at home whatever predictions you are making in the twitch chat i would say don't even think about the games before this is just raw a blight set best of one who is going to take this one um we will find out right after a short break Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by through a really, really short break. <laughs> um, no, thank okay, you for sticking okay, with us. Okay, buddy. okay, buddy. <laughs> through a significantly long break, but I think it's been fair to the league. Um, it, it hasn't really been our fault. The servers have been down. Uh, if you're wondering why it's been taking so long, uh, we've been waiting for the servers to come back online. But I have good news for you, folks. The servers are back up, and we can build up the hype once again, SSB Kid, because we're going into our deciding set. Blight on Suffocation Pit 2. Who do you think is going to be taking this one, SSB Kid? Tournament life on the line indeed. I have no idea because we made some, you know, we made some great points uh, earlier before Game 4 started and even after Game 4 or Set 4 was over. But 
you know, now that's that is a hundred percent past us. Like the momentum is like zapped now because of this long break. So, you know, we talked about it earlier before we went back on the air. It feels like just a fully just like reset, just best of one. You know what I mean? And that makes it so difficult, um, you know, for any momentum bef- that is being brought into game five is basically no longer there. And now everyone's playing with a little bit more of a relief. Like, ah, we finally got we finally got everything sorted. Thank, thank God the servers are back up type of thing. Like that energy, you know, can prove to be a little bit more healthy going into this final set. We're going to get started right away, man. Carrie, I'm so ready. I'm ready as well. I mean, from the start, I wanted to play a uh, game five set. It hasn't, we haven't arrived here in the path I thought we would arrive here, but we got here nonetheless. Battles, they've battled so hard throughout four big sets, and it all comes down to this. Who is going to be there in the losers finals? have to see is Capullo to set things off. Sinners are going to be setting the win condition for Wispy when he jumps onto flight. How well can they do as survivors though? Jar gets a pallet stun straight away. Capullo doesn't even manage to break it with his swing, but it's in the corrupted area, so he might leave straight away unless he spots another survivor. He could get another early pallet down. This is going to be good for later in the game. Absolutely, this is going to be good for later in the game, uh, you know, depending on how, how much that's, uh, you know, how many chases you can get down on that side of the map but here we go and that's going to be oh okay interesting a discordance right there in order to you know detect that someone is close to finishing a gen and now everyone's just dropping these pallets like you know eventually you're gonna run out of resources you have to be really careful right here and that's a free drop too just to gain more distance i'm assuming it's to gain more distance so someone can go back and finish the gen right yeah, I'd assume so. And I've got to say, Discordance is something we've seen a fair little bit. A really nicely timed firecracker means that Cafulio can't land the final hit. I'm sure he gave it his best shot, uh, but he can't find it because of the firecracker. Beautifully timed there from our ace haunt now. <laughs> um, it vaults over the pallet straight into Cafulio's swing. Um, he gets tagged as well, and Cafulo probably wanted to take this uh, chase all the way to the end, given that he hasn't been able to get many hits. Much pressure throughout the game. Gets the hit through the pallet, though. And it's a South America ping playing a big part there. Yeah, you got to think that, that that has to be what it is. And okay, nice BL right there. Going to still not matter in the end as we get... Uh, as we get the down onto Jaw right now, and no pain res, so you know, obviously, you, you're not in danger of getting something uh, popped on you right when the right when the hook happens. So, but we do have pop goes the weasel, so that's gonna be right here immediately, trying to get some uh, some regression right here. The fact that Discordance is proctoring so much right now makes me wonder if any other gents are even being pressured right now. Yeah, it's a really, it was a really weird start to the game. A lot of big pallets got used very, very early on. So Cafulu might feel like he can kind of be a bit more aggressive on his chases now, knowing that they don't have as many tiles to connect to. And if he plays it right, zones the survivors right, they could be in a world of trouble. A locker hop, and he decides to sprint opposite direction. Doesn't want to get too invested into that one. Trying to deny the save as much as he can. Gats them as they're running in. He does catch Nancy. She gets tagged as well. This is a really nice, aggressive start. And if he can... Stay around this area where the hook is, where the gens are. He can apply a lot of damage. Oh, and Nancy goes down. A blunder from X9 after the big break. They come in and they blunder straight away. She goes down right under the hook. And now we definitely stay here. There's absolutely no reason to to, to leave the situation right here. That's gonna be three, that's gonna be two people down. That's gonna be potentially a tunnel on two. You know, just to get her, or we're we just gonna confirm the hooks. Definitely just confirm the hook stages. So really smart stuff. Here we go. Yeah, and uh, the, the big thing, the big thing is that the gens that they had really far progressed in the, the map here have been right by the hook. So Cafulio has been able to apply pressure to them. Nazi tried to go the other way around the log pile to sneak in a save, but it did not work out at all. He's got so much hooks and so many pressures for it. A gen in the distant pops, which, no, which uh, <laughs> he knows means he has time to pick up the survivor, survivor, place them on a hook, and just still be able to have decent pressure throughout the map. Decent pressure throughout the map, indeed, for sure. Just gonna displace these such just a little bit right here. Yeah, this is uh, this is not the greatest start for X9. You have two people on hooks, and everyone's injured, so you know it's gonna be at minimum, you know, at at least the trade. But here it goes. No, that's gonna be the delivery play right there, if I'm not mistaken, right? 
Yeah, definitely. Deliverance. Didn't see any survivor coming in there. The broken icon. It could be second win or Deliverance. We're going to go for Deliverance, given the fact that we haven't seen anyone else go in there. Guess the other save as well. This is good. If that was coordinated, that means two other survivors have been found through gens. And I think it's a good time to mention as well, as uh, Wispy is going to go down here, eventually. Um... It's a good time to mention here that this is a game of two halves. We've seen this a lot throughout the tourney, especially against the Blight. It's a game of two halves. You can have a really bad start of survivors, but you always have the chance to pull it through. If, this, if the killer messes up, if he makes a blunder, um, you've definitely got a chance to bring things back. So they should not, by any means, give up. Definitely not giving up at all. That's That has to be the strat right here. Yeah, and just like that, working on a handful of, of gens right here. So going to at least pop one of them. Uh, potentially so uh, like you said you know if you know you just have to come back second half and play you know an even better set and if anyone can do that wispy is 100 percent the guy you know to do that for sure so we're gonna have to see if that can happen and wispy can pull out another miracle right here for x sign but kalfulia right now just very intent on just defending this hook right here and getting the captain eliminated from x9 as another gem pops and vistress has to come in has to come in and get something started create some pressure off this hook that's going to be a trade at the very least a little bit of a delay but still able to make it back and if you decide to go for the tunnel out we have the ubk it looks like yeah, Unbreakable. This is really, really nicely turned around for X9. Okay, so the Deliverance player unhooked themselves, then managed to get the unhook. That meant two people could crack on with generators. Those two gens got popped. We have someone on the floor with Unbreakable who got the save to prevent someone from dying. I mean, all the perks, all the plays are really working out for X9. They had such a tough start to this game, but it looks like they're going to be turning things around. That Unbreakable should be coming in, or even if there's no pressure there, they'll have someone else pick them up and they will be able to save it for later, which will catch Kufuli off guard jar now back in the chase and i think i is going to be surprised when he sees a lot of people suddenly up on their feet he seems to have lost a lot of pressure now all of a sudden there are still four survivors up with two gens to go what a turnaround for x9 turnaround indeed and this is haunts uh first hook as well so we're going to see uh obviously you know that fourth fresh hook is going to be you know potentially could come back to bite them in the end but regardless they're still able to uh at least like you said maintain all four survivors in the trials still so that means four different survivors that means three different levels of pressure even when someone's on the hook and there goes the stun right here this was fully healthy too, so gonna be able to make something happen here potentially and yeah that's why calfulio is just very intent on leaving potentially going after an injured survivor right here can we get the down and dead hearts right through it great stuff jaw another chance at life right here continuing to apply more pressure on this killer that's amazing because we saw jaw earlier actually had balanced landing right they were the player that made the balanced landing play in the suffocation pit that means they're running balanced landing and dead hard not an uncommon combo uh sorry not a common combo uh but it's not super rare either but they've used it to perfection well done from them unfortunately and uh, nancy's had quite a short chase here she's gonna go down but it's what you expect against a bry and to be honest at this stage uh, x9 will be taking anything they can if they can get another gen done from the start they had that's really really well uh, good uh, it's a really really solid effort and well played from them all around yeah definitely well played all around great crouch right there from wispy uh you know again wispy i believe is on death hook, so you have to be uh you have to be uh very mindful uh, but, you know, not even trying to confirm that kill, just uh, opting to go for someone else instead right here. It's going to be Vistress or it's going to be the Mystery Force Survivor. Can we find something right here? Oh, just bonking maybe to try to reposition. And now, uh, you know, that's the beauty with Light is that he can just transition from point A to point B and switch targets so quick with just one bump reset right here. Can you make it to this window, though? Yeah, the, yeah, the charges are resetting, so that's a little bit of time, you know, that you have. If you're Vistress, can you make it to something else right here? Jump on the locker? No, not going to get anything else here. Yeah, and I want to point out as well right now, we've got Dying Light in play. That's up to five stacks, which will be a 15% slowdown. Uh, I think it's 3% each stack. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the chat. Um, but yeah, we've got five stacks of Dying Light right now. It's going to be slowing things down massively for the survivors so that is something going in Kapulu's favor but apart from the start all the momentum has been completely with the x9 they managed to get the pickup as well jar eventually gets whacked but Kapulu just doesn't want to hook he doesn't want to hook anyone the fourth gen goes and we could be looking at five gens for x9 here five gens against the blight might potentially be a big moment right here haunt 
trying to sneak in. I didn't check the builds, but that could potentially could have been a huge play that unfortunately just did not pan out for X9. Uh, you know, and we saw that quick reset onto Vistuous, or at least a quick pickup. Because of that unbreakable, you do lose the ability to pick yourself up. Maybe you just pick yourself up, or maybe you know you 99 yourself very quickly so someone can rotate in very quickly to come pick you up. And that's hop right here onto this gen. But this regen spread, not the worst thing in the world. You're going to want to go to this side where Shaq is to get those resets going if you choose to do so. But there is a little bit of pressure, mainly because... Jo oh, my goodness. That's so unlucky. This just did on hook. And unfortunately, not going to be able to make it to a window. Can you make it to something to try to get a life play right here? I think yeah, they yeah. might end up being an honorable sacrifice. No, Capullo doesn't want it. Oh, no. It doesn't, no, that's Wispy and Chase just there. He spins around, he goes straight for the Discordance generator. He doesn't want them to pop this last one. Spins around the rock, can't get the tag onto Jar now. And he's going to be chasing them relentlessly. He knows this game is slowly slipping away from him. Goes towards the Godrock. How is he going to play this one? Is he going to be patient? No, they bolt straight into him, but he forgets about the dead on. He eats it. One straight to the face there. Jar buying crucial time for his team. And now he's running away from that generator. He taps himself slightly. He's running towards this bolt. He's not going to get it. But what time did he buy for his survivors? Can they finish the gen? Man, can they finish the gen? You know, that's, and again, Dying Light providing that slowdown, which is why the Discordance works so well with the, with the Dying Light, because, you know, to try to fight that, you, you try to stack gens, and then the Discordance just gives you information and tells you exactly where to go. But we got that reset onto Vicious because he's definitely dead on hook. So you're going to have to make sure you are uh, able to live on some uh, on some extra time right here. Another chance at life, potentially. Wispy as well, also dead on hook, but fully healthy. You're going to want to go for Haunt so you can get an immediate down and another pop right here, though. So it gets the injure onto Vicious. And now, can we get a reset right here? Can we get a uh, potentially, you know, just a... Um, uh, a rotation to another side of the map right here and i mean you know all the gens have a little bit of progress on them so you know everyone is very keen on trying to get this happen get this last gen done this is everything potentially yeah we'll just have to see how this one pans out because dying light has been deactivated now the obsession is dead discord is going to be procking off giving capulo a lot to do he's got a lot of things to micromanage but blight is probably the best killer at defending when there's three generators left down goes Nancy. Don't know if she's popped her unbreakable yet. There's been so many chances where she could have, but she could have been tapped by another player. She gets picked up and she can be put straight in the basement here. No, he's going to bring her up upstairs in front of this gen just so it's easier to access while he's patrolling generators. Look at that one though by the hook. They're going to have to abandon it. Nancy goes down. You've got two survivors left. Can they get this final gen done? Pop goes the weasel. And those were entity spikes. Entity spikes coming in saying that you've done too much right here, but that's going to be the down onto Haunt, and that is going to basically be the 4K at one gen. Yeah, think how big that is. I mean, he's got no pain res, right? So he's popped that gen seven times. He's kicked it. I mean, not all of them might have been pops, but he's hit it seven times. <laughs> the, um, so the entity spikes come up, preventing him from damaging it any further. And yeah, I think you're right though. We are going to see a 4K one, unless they can stealth it out, get a pickup, because the fact that he can't kick that gen anymore means they can, if they want to, get a full reset. And um, they can get a full reset and then slowly chip away at that gen, which could be really, really big. But yeah, I mean, it all depends if they can get it done. Can Calfulio keep an eye on the ace he has on the floor? And can he prevent Claude from picking him up? Yeah, so many questions going to be answered right now, but you know, this is, you know, Barring a, you know, miracle play of a lifetime, this is going to be the 4K at 1. And considering how we started at the beginning of the game, this is not mm -hmm. the worst case scenario, right? This is yeah. sort of matching the, you know, both killer, this killer right now matching the result that, you know, um, they got yesterday as well. So, you know, this is going to be Wispy going to have to at least match the result as well, if not do better in order to take this set or... You know, we might see we might see Wispy and NA and X9 bowing out of this tournament. So this is, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, those those hooks at the very beginning, those like, you know, that really rough two slug situation, you know, definitely uh, not the greatest situation. That definitely ate away at some hook stages that maybe you'd be willing to give up on right now at this one gen situation. But regardless, 
still able to collect themselves, still able to bring it back and keep it competitive. So just the way we like it. So this is nice. And Calfulio now just a little bit, you know, shouts to Dyer, just a little bit of housekeeping, trying to find someone right here in order to try to get, uh, you know, this 4K confirmed already and move on to the next half. Yeah, and I, I want to I wanna touch on as well. Um, I feel like this game was a beautiful metaphor for the kind of overall set we've had, right? There were so many twists and turns, but as you, as you pointed out, we've ended up at the expected result of a 4K1. It was such a roller coaster of a game. You know, they had a massive start, and then the survivors came back with some exceptional plays. But in the end, we're here where we are. And I feel like that reflects the sets we've had. We've had roller coasters in the Nurse and Wraith sets, but we've ended up here at Blight deciding things uh, once and for all and if you're wondering what's happening on our screen right now wispy is stealthing this one out so that haunt can bleed out on the ground and then they can possibly make a dash for the hatch which will um spawn at shag because once uh, once the hatch has been closed i strongly doubt that they're going to be able to um escape through the doors and yeah we're going to get the hook on which gives kafulo just extra time to try and find wispy yeah, just give him a little bit of extra time. I mean, that's uh, that's definitely good time management use right there. Uh, mainly because, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, if we get the bleed out, then that's a quick spawn to hatch. So, uh, Calfulio understanding that, understanding and playing with this time for sure. So, that's going to be basically the inevitable coming in. Because as well, uh, whenever you do get the, you know, the sacrifice off the haunt, you know, you can leave a few seconds beforehand and then just, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait, if there's a time to do it, you got to do it now. He's still did No, there's no way, right? There's no way. He's oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, she, she's, she's doing it. She's baiting him to a chase, I think, to take him towards Shaq. Horn's going to give up on Hook. She's going to drop this, and she's kind of towards Shaq right now. I mean, it's an interesting play she's cooking up with. I don't think it's going to work out. They were trying something. They were trying something new. Because I guess if she got unhooked, that would have been a trade, and, you know, he would have known where both spiders were. Cooking up something there, something only Comp DVD League players will understand. Um, yeah, an interesting try, but um, well done to Cafulio for bringing that one to a full. 4K1, and I think uh, SSB could because we've had so many, so many breaks after we've had a quick bug. I think we should hop into another campfire chat to see what we expect from pretty much potentially our final game of this match. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, lots of uh, questions unanswered to you know to answer in this final match for sure. I mean, just a recap: that was a 4K at one gen left, so. That is the win condition, and, you know, like we said, and, you know, you were, you know, shout-outs to, you know, Carrie for compiling some data all over the last, you know, basically based on the matches that we've had this weekend. You know, both of these, uh, that 4K1 condition is something that has been met already by both Calfulio and Wispy. So, you know, if Lightning strikes twice for both of them, then we're just going to go to a tiebreaker. But if we get a better result from Wispy, then it's going to be NA. It's going to be X9 moving on to the losers finals. But, you know, if we get all five generators completed, then it's going to be it's going to be sinners moving on. So, you know, the that's a pretty cut and dry situation, right? Like you have to play yeah. slightly better or or it's, it's going to be the or that's it for your tournament life. I feel like, well, it's worth mentioning, uh, if you are new to DVD League, 4K1 is the most likely result for a tiebreak. Um, I really wouldn't be surprised to see this go to a tiebreak. And we would go even later into the night with this match. I mean, it seems to be taken the entire evening or morning, depending on where you're watching this one. Um, but yeah, it's Blight, right? So a 4K2 is not by any means outside the scope of possibility. Um blight you know they can 4k with four gens still up it all depends on the snowball because blight kind of has the control as opposed to other kids you might see where it's more on the survivor's control blight has he's so dominating across the map he's he's kind of like a tyrant on the server um and if you get harassed by him so much you're just going to end up going down and if he's on point he's going to hit you with his flicks there's so much blight tech um that i'm sure loads of players like dissecting that he can just he can just kind of surprise you um and he can definitely get these results but other results i'd be saying okay the survivors are looking to tie things up here um sorry sorry the killer looking to tie things up here just defend all generators from popping but because it's blight i am definitely tempted to say that he's going to try and prevent um less than that so he's going to try and prevent three generators from going and just get the win for his team uh i mean it'll be team sinners making a miraculous run all the way from losers round one um and hoping they can make their way into the losers finals 
if you had to give over odds on it right now, SSB kid, what would you give it? Uh, you know, I know, um, I know, obviously, you know, we get a lot of different uh, results, you know, as we go about, but I feel like I don't, I don't think there will be a situation where, man, I don't, I really don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to predict because like, yeah. you know, like 4k2 is basically next to unlikely, uh, but so is like a dominant format escape, you know? So it's like, it could go either way. I think it's going to be close. It's either, it's either going to, I feel like it might be a tie or it might be, you know, sinners taking it. Oh, I'm going to have to press you for an answer because we need to know. So we can say at the end of the condition, which one is it? Which one are you going for? X9 or sinners? I feel like, I feel like, look, I feel like at the end of the day, you know, this blight pick was a pick for, uh, this was a sinners pick. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and they're going to come in and they're going to just barely outlast Wispy, just enough to get the last gen pop. And at that point, that is the match. That is the set. So I feel like, you know, we'll see, we'll see them win on their pick. I'm going to have to, I, I'm going to agree if I had to put my money on anyone, if I was predicting right now with channel points, although I think that happens at the start of the set, um, I would put my money on sinners mainly because throughout this tournament, um, I've been lucky enough to basically cast their entire losers run. Um, their survivor side has been so, so good. I mean, they've had multiple instances. Uh, if anyone remembers all the way back, I'm pretty sure it was sinners. At least they had like the DC, uh, where they had three survivors to play with and they did amazingly they did so so well to win that game it was just unbelievable um their survivor performance throughout this tournament has just been exceptional i really hope it is sinners who were the ones with that dc uh, but nonetheless i know the rest of their games have been really really good as survivor and i also think with wispy um he's he's a really really fundamentally based killer um he's really he's obviously really really good at the game i'm not confident though that his blight is as amazing as it is as the rest of his killers um i know he does have a good blight but i think he needs like some serious magic and i'm I, i'm not sure if he's got the potential but you know he's here to prove me wrong we'll see if he can prove me wrong we're loading into the game now 20 seconds from one of these teams last performance their last stand in the winter circuit potentially for sure and i mean you know kind of to just you know recap on on that point for sure is how you know being a jack of all trades um you, you know being a jack of all trades is something that you um you know that that's definitely something that you have going for yourself but then again we've talked about it before you got to play a ton of sets you got to play a ton of different killers so you know your mechanics have to be on point so you kind of just have to go in here ready to go so uh you know if wispy can pull this off this would just go on to further show that he might be a top five player on the planet. And here we go. That question potentially can be answered right now as we move on to the second half of this blight set. Again, if they pop all five gens, it's game over for NA, it's game over for Wispy, and it's game over for X9. Yeah, and I wanna note straight away, we don't have that same three gen spawn. We got these two gens very close to each other. Oh, but look at this. On sec, the gen spread is ridiculous. We've got three gens right next to each other and then four gens all at the top, the ones that aren't corrupted. I mean, they're all basically next to each other. That's a crazy spread of gens. We'll have to see how that one plays out as I'm sure it will go down towards the final generators. Let's see how that one plays out. Wispy is going to try and prevent that though by getting some early pressure. He's found Sweet Child. He's going to be bouncing around. Can he maneuver his way through these tricky objects? Waits for the pallet to be dropped. Going to bounce off this, possibly go for a second flick. He does, but can't get around the edge of the tile. Kate skips away and he's going to be forced to break the pallet and possibly retreat from this chase. Yeah, just, just to kind of recap on, you know, our predictions, like if, you know, he needed to get this down already if he wants a shot at potentially creating some pressure because that's how you know we've been on the corrupt side of things. So you know that a gen is going to pop somewhere in the distance any second now. No discordance opting to go for Spies of the Shadows for more information, not just on gen pressure, but just overall movement, overall rotations. And, you know, that's something that Whiskey, I feel like, does enjoy a lot more. So... Uh, so potentially can get some value out of it. Unfortunately, not able to bonk onto anything. However, if you do walk down survivors, you do get a chance to at least get your recharges here. Yeah, well, 
having gens popped in the distance, as you said, right at the start, it's all dependent on if the communication was good from the survivors. If they recognize that four gen spread they have, they know they can pressure three of those gens right straight away and get some good star. I'm not sure that did happen though. We got a very, very early save on Decay. Also, it's very difficult against the Blight to anticipate how long you're going to be in chase for. So difficult to set up in advance. Kay, is she going to make this the way? No, she doesn't. She gets sliced in the middle of it and a very, very quick tunnel from Wispy. Now, this is our obsession. Do we have Decisive Strike? No, no Decisive Strike. Or well, maybe they're keeping it for later. We'll have to see. Yeah, that's definitely something to note for sure. Going to keep it for later or doesn't even have it. But we are going to see potentially something here. Can we get it? Yeah, that gent's going to pop. And can you rotate over far enough, fast enough to in order to get something going? Oh, no, that's a hit. Yes, great stuff right there. Bucky ended up getting hit. Can we get something here? Can we get a down? I mean, again, we talked about this before. You know, he needs to get as much mileage out of these downs in order to put himself in a favorable situation in order to win this game for X9. But right now, a bit of a, a bit of a, you know, mid game moment right here where there's not a whole lot going on. He hasn't started to chase, but that you saw that one gen, I believe Jason was on is almost done. Yeah, and I do want to know, by the way, it is Bucky with decisive strike. Um, that's our ace player. He's got um, Dead Art as well, I believe. So he's going to be the one to look out for there. Sweet Child down in the basement. They ran towards Shaq and they're going to pay the penalty for it because they're going to be eliminated out of the game. Now, if I'm Survivors, I'm thinking about just tying that win comp for now and maybe at the end I can push for that last gen. But it's a little bit of a ropey start. A Survivor eliminated with four generators to go. There will be a lot of progress and there's evidence of it. He <laughs> Wispy sees that gen, realizes he can't stop it in time and heads straight back towards the other side of the map. Complete diagonal, but this is something Bright can do. They have the mobility to just absolutely turn around and sprint across the other side. Now he's going to be looking to engage in the chase with, I believe, Bucky. Yeah, definitely Bucky, you know, a favorable chase right here, but Bucky is so aware. Just going to that top side of the map, understanding by main building, understanding that there's not a whole lot to do Ooh. right here. Gets the hit through the pallet and that the most favorable situation at least gets. And he had smash hit too. That would have been a potentially ro uh, rotate over to the side of other side of main building and would have delayed that chase even longer. But now we get uh, now we get a pop stack back. Yeah, that could have been a game-winning stun. The pallet that saved Sinners, but it was not to be. They're not being saved just yet. They've got a long battle ahead of them now as they have to go and work towards this unhook. But Spies from the Shadows, a very interesting pick from Wispy. It's going to give him a lot of information, and it's proving to be quite valuable information. Quite valuable information indeed. And oh, so smart right here. Gonna get the pop and then see where the survivor rotates to. Yeah, still sticking around. And this is where potentially. Oh no, it just went out of frame. That's unfortunate. Oh, oh the no, barrel that's tech. unfortunate. The, the barrel tech OP. He can't see him. He's John Cena right now. Let's go. You can't hit what you can't see. And she's still there. She's still around the barrel. Wispy, absolutely clueless. The biggest barrel attack in DVD League history. What a play from Gustavo. The pallet stun didn't work out for Bucky, but the barrel works out for Gustavo. What a play around the barrel. The buckets are just loving sinners right now. Beautiful stuff for Gustavo. What we love to see in our fifth set of the Winter Circuit loses semi-finals. Now Wispy is going to see Nia back here, wondering how she's still here. The firecracker won't blind him, but Nia does get the bolt. She goes away through the TNL walls. Now Wispy has to play this without power because he's used all his rushes. Yeah, he's going to have to play without power right here and has pretty good resources here. Uh, yeah, that's just going to be delaying that hit. is so important. Here comes the next gen popping right there. That's so unfortunate. The time that they wanted to spend on that smash hit stun, uh, ends up making up for it right here. Gustavo doing an excellent job. But here comes the chases right here. Can we find something? No. Were they just on the rock the whole time and they have the BL still? This is going to be more time wasted right here. Oh, great. Yeah, great awareness from Gustavo. Do you chase this if you're wispy? Or do you just rotate and try to stop more gents from being done? Oh, I'd be scared to go anywhere near Gustavo right now. They just seem to be juicing up. Although, having said that, they take the hit and throw the pallet down without getting the stun. Wispy looks like he's going back towards the generator, but no. He wants revenge on Gustavo for barrel attacking him and for hitting him on the hill. He's going to go for this one rush left. He swings, but the crouch tech gets there. He can't quite hit him. Gustavo ducking out the way quite literally, but now in a super unsafe pallet. Wins the 50-50 mind game. Trying to hold W towards the next pallet. I don't think they've got the distance for this. No, they're going to go down. They go down, but what time has Gustavo? 
Gustavo bought for his team. If they can get two generators done, that is it. They are moving forward to the losers' finals. There's one being worked on in the distance, and there's a survivor stealthing quite near the down survivor. Yeah, that's rather unfortunate right there. You hear that Chen chugging along as well, right? So you got to be really careful here. Can you find something? Can you find a hook immediately? You know, like, do you walk over? Yeah, I think that might be the you know, optimal play. Walk over, you rush over to that gen. You get a hit if they're still on it, unless it's so close to being done. Oh, no, just off the lead right there. Yeah, I think the gen was still aggressive, right? They hadn't tapped it, um, so nothing that he could really do. They still have that gen in the distance that he wants to keep an eye on. I'm wondering if they've 99 it, if they want to pop it just yet. I'm curious to see what the play is going on there. The survivors will be cooking up something, but they've got time to breathe, right? A lot of minutes on Gustavo's hook uh, because they tunneled out Sweet Child. And remember, Dying Light went with that. So they left Sweet Child in the basement. They could do that because they were the Dying Light survivor, got a lot of value out of it, and Gustavo did really, really well on their chase. They're in a pretty good position to at least tie this game. There it is. There's the tie condition. There's a tight condition, and you already know which gen they have been prioritizing. It's right there at the TNL wall, and Bucky kind of just stealthing out, waiting for the right time to pounce and get the save. Gonna let the second hook stage confirm for sure, but you know this is the this is how it's gonna be. Like, can you pop this last gen? I mean, you know. I don't know if it'll happen. That pop is gone too, but you know, this gen has been regressing. So, you know, you do get a little bit of a, you do get a little bit of a time to breathe. That's 50%. That's nothing. If Jason can make this chase last long enough, that's going to be, that's going to be the gem pop. No, he never got in chase and Blood didn't realize he was here. Oh, but he did. He did. Maybe Spies from the Shadows gave him a clue as to where we Jason was. Don't know how he would have had that info otherwise. But remember, this is our deliverance player we're facing. And while this is happening, Bucky is silently getting on with that gen. He's cracking it on. Now Claudette can head calmly to the hook, knowing they can just send it no. because they've got deliverance as well. Oh, but they could get caught out. Remember, they have a... Uh, oh, who is it with Unbreakable? I'm not sure. But they're playing this pallet back and forth. Oh, the vault. The vault in pallet interaction. And the gen is getting done. The gen is getting done, done in the over. background. Wispy it's has over. to rush back. Oh, there's two it's seconds over. left on it. Does he get in it? He might just commit all the way. Does it pop? He does. They take it. Sinners with the win over X9 in the closest game you'll ever see. Oh my god. When he when he rushed over the first time, I don't think he saw him. So he decided to just let it go or maybe just wanted to get the kill. But not working out the way he wanted to. And that's going to be crazy. I mean, so much time that was wasted. That was wasted by Gustavo with the fire barrel, the fire barrel tech, the, you know, time wasted on the hill and then still buying more time with the BL. All those precious seconds proving to be worth it in the very end. And unfortunately, we're saying goodbye to Wispy. We're saying goodbye to NA and we're saying goodbye to X9 as they go out in fourth place. Credit where credit's due to Sinners. They have been phenomenal to match that win condition on Wraith. That was such a difficult task, but they got it done. Yes, they're a restart, but they got it done nonetheless. And their flight performance, I love the way they slowed down the game here. Realized that the time Gustavo bought them was enough. They could just absolutely slow this one down and play it to perfection. Wispy now having his final chase in the winter circuit, but the win condition is met. Five generators against X94. They have done it. The survivors leave. It's going to be a three out as Nia gets the hatch here. She's getting waved at. Oh, when he closes it, it looks like we're going to have a 1v1. And SSB, again, I'll let you one close this one out, although I don't think it's going to be too long. Yeah, definitely not going to be too long right there. And man, the down on to Gustavo, you know, how fitting would it have been if Gustavo was the one that went through the hatch because he he is the one that bought so much time for these survivors. And man, it ended up being just worth it enough. Going to die a martyr and going to die a winner and going to die in his way on towards the losers finals where they're going to be facing off against the loser of the next set that we have today it's going to be the loser of elysium versus calamity and man what a way to finish it was a bumpy road but we made it to the very end and that's just going to be how the cookie crumbles and they had a good run but south america the cinderella story continues